our chat show here tonight. We have some great special guests on tonight. Sorry we're running a little bit late. We had a little uh, little couple of errors just at the beginning of my show, but now we're ready to go. Oh, how you all doing, folks? You're very welcome to the Walker Talker chat show here tonight. Uh, just jumping on board here now and uh, just running a little tad late. Of all the things, it's a couple of few technical things that happen from time to time and how these things happen, I do not know. Uh, even my, uh, where I have my, uh, my uh, texts come in are not coming in, so I have to read them off. Uh, basically, just nip over to Facebook and have a, a wee look over there. So there we go. So it's one of those nights uh, when I just just about to come on, my microphone decided it didn't want to say hello. So there we go. So hopefully you can all hear me loud and clear. And uh, yeah, so there we go. That's the, that's the way. It, that's the way it rocks. Uh, yeah, so we have some great guests on the show here tonight, and uh, so I'm looking forward to getting on board. So hello to everybody. Uh, Demi and uh, Dale is over there watching the TV. Uh, Tina McFadden, how's it going? How are you? Uh, didn't think you were coming on. No, I wouldn't let you down. It's just uh, a tech issue. The microphone decided not to not to come on. Uh, having a the shave there, and though, yeah, I did. A few people actually said they they actually didn't like they didn't mind the beard on me. So you know. My, this light actually makes me look uh, makes me look redder than I am when I have it up. Uh, it's too light. It's too too bright in here, and uh, it doesn't need to be. It actually makes me look glowy. I am a bit glowy anyway. But uh, um, hello, Karen Conlon. Hello, how are you? Uh, yeah, everyone's going down to me feed there. I normally have everyone that I can see in my feed um, here on my. I have a certain piece of software that belongs to me. Yeah. Uh, and uh, all my chats come in there, and they're they're not they're not coming in to say hello for some reason. Um, so yeah, yeah. So uh, maybe I don't know what I've done wrong. Maybe I'll have to uh, I'll have to check out me me uh, some of me me settings here today. I don't know what's going on, but anyway, we're here, we're on board, and we're going to do our best to run with what we have, and uh, that's the way it rocks, isn't it? So you're very welcome. Yeah. So uh, we have a, a couple of special guests on tonight. We have um, Jason Francis here. He's a world senior snooker cha- uh, champion chairman. Um, we're going to be talking to him uh, first of all. We're going to be talking to him on um, hopefully on our Zoom. Hopefully we don't have any more problems with our Zoom. Hang on, I'll just actually log into my Zoom while we're while we're all talking. Yeah. Everything doesn't want everything doesn't want to be friendly with me tonight for some reason. 
yeah so let, let's 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 do it and uh yeah there we go i better get logged in there and uh otherwise won't be able to take any calls on me on me zoom yeah so yeah so uh yeah hang on we're getting there we're getting there bit by bit bit by bit now i'm raging i can't see some of my text i have to keep going back into my facebook i normally have a piece of software i can see all my chats and it's not saying hello to me for some reason uh is there any reason why that's happening i wonder yes but anyway but you can hear me okay everything's all right yeah okay looking and sounding good okay that's good grand ali uh patrick charles how are you doing buddy um Lorraine Brazel, hello, how are you? How's it going? Yeah, so you're just welcome. Uh, how was your weekend? Uh, were you all busy the weekend? Uh, had a bit of a hectic kind of day here, there and everywhere, kind of rushing around doing this, that and the other. And when I came back, I had all my show lined up. Uh, I got it ready this morning. And then uh, when I came back uh, to go and go live, um, a couple of bugs set in. Well, not so much, you know microphone glitch uh the microphone didn't want to say hello but anyway i have it sorted for now i'll make sure i go back over my sentence and check everything out make sure we're okay and uh also we have uh O'Shane fagan is going to be on he's uh, a boxer uh he's also done a bit of football as well so i'm looking forward to talking to him here tonight and then we're going to have rud rud stewart all the way he's all the way over in sweden and uh, he's going to be talking to us. We're, we're getting him on the Mondays now. Uh, we have uh, Rudd's rants. He's going to come on and uh, have a bit of banter with us. Um, yeah, he's. Uh, I don't know what we're going to basically talk to him about tonight. We're going to let him come on on his Mondays and uh, see what he's going to bail in and talk about. And uh, tomorrow night we have uh, Jeff Keaton. Uh, our medium is going to be here. Um, let me see. Now, I was to ring back. Now, he's on, he's on the... the um, what's her name? Clareborn show tonight. Um, oh, I hate that one. I can't think of names. It's coming to me. Um, Sil Fox. I was only talking to him there the other day. We're going to have Sil Fox on. on. I, I, we just have to make sure we, we haven't booked in, but not confirmed just as a time for Wednesday. So we're going to try and get him in for uh, Wednesday. We have a few people booked in for Wednesday as well for other, other lineup stuff. Um, yeah, once you have your whiskey, someone's saying, Mary O'Sullivan is there. Suzanne Brown, hello, how are you? Kelly Kennedy, how are you? Forgive me now if I, if I miss, you, miss you because I normally have a, a chat feed here and it's not taking in the feed for some reason. Um, and I'm just going over to my Facebook and it only lets me see four at a time, which is weird. And um, so I normally have my chat here where it shows me a lot more and why it's not shown uh, everything. Hey, you had the looking good with the beard gone. A mm, few people actually liked the beard they did. Now, I should have died and got it trimmed. You never know. I, I, I kind of got a bit attached to it, literally. Um, so, you know, I don't know. I may, I may, it only takes a month for me to grow a beard. It's weird, isn't it? Very fast for facial hair. Um, yeah, so that's all I wanted to... Uh, just uh, yeah, I should have got it dyed and stuff like that. But anyway. Anne Doyle, hello. How are you? Welcome on board. Lorraine Basil, hello. Um... Sil, he's a great entertainer. Saw him loads of times. Yeah, so we were going to get Sil. I was talking to Sil. He was actually just going out on the golf course uh, there the other day. And uh, now I could have had him on earlier, but he's not, he's going to actually, he's, it's just coincidence he's going to be on the Clareborn show tonight. And, um, and I was talking to him. We're going to try and get him on on Wednesday. Um, it's just that I, I had the show kind of a lot of t time slots um, just jam-packed with stuff. And that, that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to bring people um, on board. Now, I'm going to get, uh, just wonder why my chats aren't coming up. It's bothering me now because I normally get, you look longer, you, you, you look younger with it. With what? With the beard or without the beard? You look younger with it, Lorraine is saying. Uh, yeah, with or without. With or without you. With or without you. Oh. We'll get attached to it again. Yeah, I could. I could grow it again. Actually, it'd only take me a month and I could grow it. And then I could trim it and make it look jaluvious. And maybe get rid of the grey bits that grow here. Go, but we're not worried about all that. It's only it's only pay, isn't it? It's only silly stuff. Now, Pennies is going to be opening on, I believe it's going to be on Friday. Are you going to be one of the mad crazy people who's going to be camping outside Pennies? Did you ever see the day? And then people queuing for hours and hours and hours for McDonald's. I know you can just walk into it. You know, give yourself a breather. I think the world is a bit upside down at the moment. Without it, sorry, she says, Lorraine. 
She said, you look younger without the beard. Okay, yeah. I suppose, I suppose I do. And it's actually in, uh, in around Father's Day. I don't know if it falls on the same day. On the 16th. I'm going to be 50. 50. Holy Janey Mac and Nights. I don't feel 50. You can feel me if you want. Yeah, but you can also make sure you can you can give me a bell on the show as well. But we're going to have uh, some special guests coming in uh, now in a minute. We're going to uh, we're going to be getting started and having a, a bit of banter with Jason Francis. We're going to be uh, we're going to be talking to him. Going to get him on board actually now in just a sec. Uh, I suppose it'd be good to get him on board, wouldn't it? And uh, we'll have a bit of banter with him. And uh, yeah, so let's get Jason on board and uh, we'll have we'll have a bit of banter and. Uh, we see how we go. This is Jason. He's a World Senior Snooker Chairman. We're going to get him on the board and have a bit of talking about the old snooker. We had Ken Doherty on there the other day. Now, let me see. Can you hear me? Or can I hear you? I'm just going to get you all set up. You can hear me? I can hear you. Oh, that's okay. Now, I'm just going to make you... I'm going to make you visible to everyone else now. Just give me one second. Ah, oh, yes. The, the, the wonderful world of technology. The wonderful world of tech. <laughs> ah, yes. I'm just going to get you in there. There we go. I nearly have you there. I'm just going to make you more visible to the rest of the world here now. Um, Jason, how are you doing anyway? They can hear you anyway. I have you live. Yeah, I'm, I'm listening great. Uh, thanks for inviting me on. No, it's delighted to have you on, you know. Uh, now, let me see. I'll just get you onto my... Uh, let me see. Sorry, I'm just... I'm busy, busy walking me wizardry here while I'm talking to you. Uh, we're after been talking about of all teams we're after been talking about my beard I had a beard I grew a beard in a month I never had one before and I grew one and people did be commenting and saying nah you look better without the beard and you, you shouldn't have had the beard <laughs> so we were, to, we were talking rubbish before you came on you know before you came on yeah so, uh, I think every man has been through the same thing ah uh, you, you have to do the beardy thing don't you yeah, yeah, you do. You have to give it a shot. Now, there we go. You look lovely. There we go. We have you up on the screen. And you're, lovely. you're very welcome, Jason. There we go. A bit of technology for everyone so they can all see it on, on the screen here. You know what I mean? So uh, it's just I have to send them out so they can see a lovely jubbly. So you're very welcome on board. I was talking to Steve Carroll today, which is a, he's a major, major snooker fanatic, as you know. As you know. Yeah, he's always, yeah. He's always out and about um, planting a few balls, so to speak. <laughs> well... Not that many, apparently. Oh, there we go. In with the jab. There we go. You should have been a boxer. There we go. Yes. Steve has helped me. Uh, he's actually producing some of the show with me now at the moment. He's co-producing this show with me at the moment. So uh, I'm absolutely delighted top to have man. him on. But he is top man. He is top man. So we're working together uh, on the show, and it's great to have him on board. And uh, we do have him the banter. We have a bit of crack on the phone. A few ideas that we have coming up and stuff like that, you know. But anyway, you got involved with the uh, with the you, you're the world uh, senior snooker chairman, and you got involved. You actually put two guys together at the start. Was one of them was um, uh, was it was it Alex Higgins? Was yeah. Well, phew, you're taking me back there. It's uh, well, it's eleven years ago now where I first uh, I first came up with an idea for something called Snooker Legends, and yeah. Uh, idea as a snooker fan it was a vehicle for alex higgins and jimmy white two players who obviously are Huge. adored Huge. over ireland yeah big time um and uh, i actually met alex uh, the very first time it was six months before our first ever show which was actually his last ever playing appearance at the crucible and i met him at city west so uh i actually traveled into ireland on a cold morning i was uh Pretty apprehensive. Um, Jimmy White had said to me, look, you need to be prepared for Alex. <laughs> you know, he can be tricky. Yeah. And I was thinking, look, I'll, I'll be okay. It's, uh, you know, I, I know what we're doing here. I've done a lot of theatre. And, uh, yeah, he was still my hero. So, you know, right. don't get me wrong. But I also had to think, well, okay, I'm, I'm basically going to become Alex, Alex's employer. I... I had the one thing that he kind of craved more than anything, which was a trip back to the Crucible Theatre to play Snooker. So I guess it started off where I felt I had a bit of a trump card, but uh, yeah. <laughs> he soon worked me over. Don't worry about that. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. So who who did you originally team him up with? Like who who did you, who else did you start off with? Was it was it Jimmy White and just himself? Well, just those two you started off yeah. with? Yeah, it, it, it was always going to be Alex and Jimmy, but uh, yeah. as I say, rather than 
generally, especially in Ireland, I mean, if you wanted to see Alex play Jimmy, they they they've done exhibitions all over the over the place. Every yeah. super club. My... So I was from a theatre background, so uh, I was looking to do something a bit kind of bigger and more of an entertainment model evening. Oh, yeah. So I couldn't just rely on Jimmy and Alex. Yeah, well. My my nanny was a major Steve Davis fan. Okay, now I swear to God, I'm not even messing with you. All right, she used to absolutely love this snooker. And what she said about she what her words for Steve Davis was, he's lovely and clean. That's what she yeah, said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> he's fairly clean. And then the other thing she used to have, my nanny used to be like this. Hang on, my nanny, my nanny used to have, remember years ago you couldn't get the prescription glasses. Remember that you couldn't get all yeah, those yeah. things. And I'm taking you back a little bit of time. And I actually met Alex Higgins one day as well. I'll tell you about that now as well. And uh, so basically me nanny be watching the telly and she had three pairs of glasses on the on her neck like this. You know, on the strings. You know what I mean? And she'd have them like yeah. that. So one pair was for the telly. So she'd put them on, you know, she'd be watching the telly. And she'd be nearly in the telly watching it. And then yeah. she'd go she'd go from that to, you know, she had her, her looking around glasses, right? So she had another pair. So if you said nanny, she'd go... She take off these glasses, you know. She go, she watching this. She go, yeah. What do you want? Yeah, nanny wears that. And then yeah. she had another pair there, and a third pair hanging around the neck. And she'd read the new. They were reading glasses. So she had three pairs of glasses around the neck at this one. But she absolutely yeah. loved Steve Davis. She was, oh, she loved him. She always says, "I love him." He's really clean. <laughs> but he's a quiet uh, one, isn't he? Pretty good choice, you know, an unbelievable snooker player. And in his uh, early days, you know, very. Misunderstood. He is the funniest man. Uh, yeah, because yeah, he, he, uh, he gets bad press because people think he's bored, and don't they? They used to say in, in, interesting. The, the, he used to get bad press about that because people had this persona because of his playing came across as bored. Um, he, he was a born winner. You know, he changed the yeah, game. But, but where he was very, very clever is he embraced it. Yeah, he turned that interest. Yeah. In, Boring angle, and yeah, I got an extra career out of it. Really, they, I think they even had him on Spit and Image, didn't he? As Steve Interest and yeah. Davis, yeah, they that's right, yeah, they, they did. did. That's only coming back to me now, that's weird, but uh, yeah. But the other thing was, um, yeah, he, he, during his interviews, then you'd see him, then he'd actually lighten up and he was actually, he was actually all right, he was a bit of skip. And then the other thing I found out, uh, I was talking to Ken Doherty there a couple of weeks ago here mm. on the show. And yeah. uh, another thing that came up then, he has a massive, a massive collection of uh, records that he collects. He collects, oh, yeah. he collects records. Yes, Steve Davis plays Glastonbury now, you know, and it's like <laughs> progressive rock. Yeah, yeah. Know, it's, uh, yeah, just, yeah. It's just incredible. And uh, I've been really fortunate to work with Steve a few bit. I mean, he, he wasn't in the first collection. Yeah. He joined a couple of times afterwards. Um, you know, I remember some of the times after the shows we sit down with him and he's a complete fountain of knowledge and i remember one day uh, we stumbled across the fact that uh, he enjoyed a game of chess and really? uh i i played chess a little bit as a youngster and i thought and uh, and he brought out a book on chess and so suddenly i'm sat here the most and i think we were in berlin and i'm sat there for 20 minutes having a having a conversation with steve davis about you know a Sicilian defence or a four nights opening and uh, just a completely knowledgeable person with so many things you wouldn't think of outside the house. Right, right, right. Now, I, I met Alex Higgins one night. I didn't uh, so much meet him. He was in he was in a pub years ago and he'd done such a bizarre thing. Really? Yeah, yeah. He'd, he'd done <laughs> such a bizarre thing. I was actually telling Ken, uh, Ken Darity, uh, when, I, when I was talking to him and... Um, I was I was in the Royal Oak of Fingers. Now it's you're going back about it must be about twenty years or more, tw- maybe twenty five. But I was in, I was in the pub one night and I was just I was just delighted to see that he was in the building. You know what I mean? Watching the band that was there and stuff like that. And I was really you know kind of smitten boy because like I I was a kind of I was a fan you know. But he done a okay. bizarre thing at the end of the night. Then you know just down near where the toilets were in the in the pub, the 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 floor like it was all carpet down as far as say. Just before the toilet, then it was all just um kind of marble floor, you know. Then just two 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 toilet doors. But he was drinking down that end, and uh, he was just having a point. <laughs> and he had one full point there, and he was drinking this point, and it was very close to like everyone going home. And I was just looking down, and I just so happened to be looking, you know, I looked down for that moment, and everyone was kind of filtering out bit by bit. 
but he just got the point right the full point and he just thrown it over his shoulder without even looking <laughs> And it just smashed all over the floor. And I was the only one that seen him doing. And everyone going, what was that? What happened? Well, Jenny, what happened? He just literally took it up and just thrown it over the shoulder. He didn't even look. He just thrown it over the shoulder yeah. for no reason. Of, of all, no- all I can, all I can, uh, and again, I, I don't uh, profess to have been a, you know, a very, yeah. very close. Friend. I was, I was in Alex's life for about the last six, seven months, but I was kind of in it most days, you know. Yeah, you yeah, in, I know what you're saying. Alex, kind of in a circle and once he was kind of relying on you you would get daily phone calls and demands for this and that but as i say i, I remember the first time i met him in city west and I, jimmy had warned me about meeting him and he said he'll be late and, he'll, and, and uh so i was prepared myself i was all hyped up and um he turned up dead on time he walked through the front door of city west like literally causing a commotion walked straight up to me and kissed me right on the lips and I was gone <laughs> like, I mean you can't get any more charismatic than that and then like you know that's unbelievable just, yeah and and from then from then my head was scrambled then all my defenses were down and it was like and he'd have this and he ordered from the bar yeah, and he yeah. wanted to see it. I love had our tape I had on betting it was, it was incredible I have to say I love eccentric people or oddball people I, I like that kind of when they have their own style and that's a, that's a great thing that he had I, I like that about him and I used to love the way he played around the table he kind of he was always quirky and kind of on edge and he he was always you know on the go <laughs> he was great to watch he's, he's the nearest thing I've, it's a really weird analogy but he, he was almost like a ballerina around the snow oh he table. just the way he would float and in and out of shots and stretch and there, there has, you know, undoubtedly, he's not probably in the top 10 of snooker players ever on ability. But he could play shots and creations that no player to this day has ever done. And on his day, he, he could raise his performance probably to a level that no one could compete with. And as you say, he kind of, the more adversity he had, the, I mean, he beat Davis one year with his foot in a cast. You know, he's hobbling around the table against <laughs> the best player in the world. That's what I'm it's saying. kind of a distraction, and it, and it kind of, yeah. he raised his level to it. It was an uh, unbelievable, he had an unbelievable aura. That's the only way I can describe yeah, it. Yeah, he did. You knew if Alex Higgins was in the room. You didn't even have to see him. You knew he was in the room, and it could go one of two ways. You were either going to have the best night of your life, yeah. and you were going to witness but uh yeah no i i love that because some people have that uh, natural aura and uh he definitely carried like that extra that extra special Mm -hmm. kind of something about him you know what i mean there was just something about him that just made him stand out yeah you have a a charity song uh on the go as well um that he's released yeah what? Well, well, during the lockdown, um, yeah. obviously no no one's been able to play snooker and everyone goes, oh, isn't it terrible? No, trust me, it's not terrible up to what else has been going on. We just haven't been able to hit a few balls. It's you. been terrible for everybody, but, yeah. <laughs> but what we've uh, what we've been doing, and it was started by World Senior Snooker, is I, uh, I had a conversation one day with our top over 55s player, a guy called Gary Filmus, um, who was a top, top uh London amateur in his day. Okay. And he, he had a table at home. And I said, well, look, why don't you go live on Facebook today on our page, try and pop 10 blue balls off the spot, and I'll throw in a couple of quid to an <laughs> NHS charity, and we'll see how we get. That's how it started. And we started off saying, well, let's raise £147. So that's maximum. Right. Then it started, uh, like, just like snowballing and like Stevie did it. We had it in Ireland for the HSC and they started raising money. And every day people would do these blue ball challenge. That was like, well, we can do 1,470 here. Then it became, we could do 10,470. So it then we, we changed it to another thing. And then during another lockdown, we went, why don't we release a charity single? <laughs> so, yeah. It just went... <laughs> here we had a few good singers on the tour and, yeah. um, you know, I've witnessed a lot of it. Some of them in goths, by the way. And uh, right. Stevie's played those nights after the Irish Masters has been over and the guitar comes out. Yeah. Uh, you get Ken on the karaoke, Mark Selby, John Virgo, people like that. So um, I was really lucky. I had a guy called Jack Filmus, who was a film producer, and a snooker player called Mario Veltman, who is from Holland. Not a lot of people would know him. Right. But he actually won Holland's Got Talent many years ago. So this guy could sing, and he had a studio as well. 
So yeah, I think we came up with this crazy idea and created created a single. We've released it and we're we're almost up to fourteen thousand seven hundred pounds now. Wow, wow, wow! That's that's big. Now I I have the single. I'll play it now. Like it when 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 we're. Oh finished. really? Yeah, I'll play it when we're finished. Uh, having a yeah, bit, yeah, a, bit a bit of banter. So people, I, can, I, people can still donate, but there's there's a lot of yeah. world champions on it. And actually, we got. And this was a, a thrilling thing because I said if we were going to do it, I didn't want it to be a karaoke novelty. But, um, you know, yeah. snooker players gave their time to do this, and I didn't want to make it look silly. They've all got reputations. Yeah, well, not at the end of the day, I mean, you know, we're not looking at rock stars; we're looking at snooker players. Not, Ooh. not, ev- not everybody can sing. I mean, and for them, so just... they still didn't want it to come back and haunt them in years gone by when someone would go. Yeah, yeah, no, I, you know what? I, I think, I think, um, in fairness, like it's not, it's not going to do that. I think it came across really good as a, uh, you know, I watched the video today and. Uh, I mean, I can, I think I almost know the guy that you're talking about was the singer. He's red hot. He was good. Does yeah, one, does, yeah. one, does one good? And in vote? fact, we got a message. We got a message from Sting's management company, right? To actually say, and I thought, well, the message had come, and he go, Sting says he really likes the song, and I thought, well, anyone would say that. But then he added it and said, oh, and there's a guy on there who can really sing. So that proved to me that Sting himself had listened to the song. Yeah, so but I, like it was, I, yeah, I had a mutual connection to get. To yeah, that, well, that that's deadly. Yeah, so uh, you know, I I used to watch um, Dennis Taylor. Then he used to have his uh, his glasses on upside down. Do you know what I, mean? yeah. I used to love that. I I, I mean, I, my dad, Andy, used to watch snooker was on the telly twenty four seven. You know what I mean? And uh, we used to we used to watch you know all the all the greats actually that you're you're really involved with now at the moment and. Um, I I loved it. I loved it all. You know, what I mean, they're just it was brilliant. And then I ended up becoming a bit of a snooker buff myself for a little while. You know what I mean? For actually, for I, th- I think that's how we all got into it. Truthfully, yeah. Well, our say, dads you mentioned your dad and your <laughs> nan or whatever. We all had those generations of people who yeah were, were glued to the telly, and that was our first kind of view of snooker. Um, and it, as I say, relatively snooker was cheap television production wise. You're yeah, only yeah. Star- staring at one fixed camera. It's got colour, colour TV. It was great. So um, <laughs> and that's it, that's how everyone got into it. Yeah, yeah. I think I remember one night the the, the black and white TVs. It was going between colour and black and white. You know what I mean? You're, you know, yeah. you get the guy saying well, that, the black ball is behind the pink. Yeah, you know, yeah, what I mean? Ted Lowe, yeah, tell us where, Ted which one is that? Yeah, yeah. You get yeah, all that. Was, and I, I think I'm I'm well. I, I'm right in saying it was actually David Attenborough that got snooker. To BBC Two. Um, yeah, actually, he yeah, I actually heard that before. Yeah, at the time, and when colour television came in, he thought, "Well, what if this is a great sport to to show colour television?" So when you watch him now, and he's off making Blue Planet, and he's like, "You forget, he he's the guy who got Snooker on TV." Well, 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 and he's absolutely what a voice he has. You just listen to him all day. The way he explains stuff, isn't he? he? Has that real that voice where you just want to listen to him for ages. Nah, he probably can't make a twenty break though. Let's be ah. <laughs> <laughs> we leave we leave that up to up to Steve Carroll. We'll let him try and do that, huh? Yeah, we won't mention the war. <laughs> but, uh, so what's what's on the plans now when you when you um when this is all back to normal, are you just going back out well, on tour? We we would do yeah, I mean obviously the, the big thing at the moment is that we want to try and get the world seniors championship on in August. Um, okay. And that that will be at the Crucible Theatre straight after the main professional championship. And so you know, obviously, that's a vehicle for your Stephen Hendrys, your Jimmy White, your Fed and your champion. Yeah. Tony Drago from Malta, still the fastest player. Yeah, in the world. and you're dragging up some names um, now and just sitting here going, yeah. wow, well, wow, man. And it still means, it still means so much to them. So, as much as we can, we want to try and make that event happen. Brilliant. Then we'll get into next season. Um, obviously, we were due to be in Goffs for the Irish Masters yeah. in March. We pushed it to July. Then Rather than try and keep playing a guessing game now, yeah. we pushed it right back to March 2021. But that will be played with the same amount of people who qualified. So those people who weren't there right to get there. So, um, you know, you've got Stephen Hendry going back to golf for the first time in so many years. Michael really? Judge, who's an Irish player, has qualified to play there. So um, you're Jimmy White's defending champion. So, And that event was pretty much so bad. So really? we're expecting that when we all get back together again, that... Uh, it doesn't take us long to fall back into things, but 
Yeah, no, it won't, it won't take long for people. I mean, the passion's still there. People still want to go and see it. I want to go and see it. Steve better have tickets for me. I'll, you know. <laughs> but actually, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, dude, that's right. We're running actually a competition on the page here for uh, tickets. Mm. So um, I, that's what I said to Steve. We probably should have got you to give them away, but we'll, we'll probably do that again. But we're now we're giving them away soon. Uh, to go yeah, on. listen, that'll be great. Let's hope by that time that we we are you know, over this terrible pandemic and we're at a point where we can make sure your two so winners get to meet. What, what, have, what, have you, what have you been doing with your own time now, have, uh, Jordan, this madness? Or let, you, well, you can look at it as a big I, holiday I, at this stage. <laughs> well, it, you know, it started out as a week, but it, if you're involved in a kind of sport or you're involved in sort of travelling a lot, I mean, yeah, yeah. do the legends and seniors and that I do some well with Ronnie exhibitions as well and so I'm used to being away quite a bit so um, okay. probably my wife can't wait for me to get yeah, to get to out of the house yeah, um, yeah. but it's, it's amazing we've uh, you know every day we have we have someone doing one of the charity challenges now so you know you're, you're all over today we were in Bangkok this afternoon with a player doing it tomorrow we're in Egypt so we, every day we, we have some social media live, which keeps fans interactive. We're, we're yeah. still planning heavily for next season, of course. I've got 250 tour members, over 40-year-olds, who are desperately waiting to know when they can get their cues out again. And, of course, we've got to, we've got to try and find a way to get the sports club back open. Yeah. Because uh, players need practice facilities, and, you know, the hospitality sector has been hit really hard yeah so yeah let's yeah, hope yeah. that once they're back open people will go and kind of support their clubs because especially in ireland there are so many clubs that have been around for so long and you know some of them will be in jeopardy through this without a shadow of a doubt yeah yeah i, I think the, the whole world is a bit upside down at the moment it's a really a really a, a crazy place at the moment I've never seen it so crazy at the moment and uh hopefully hopefully some of the some of the things just heal over quick and uh, we get back to some sort of normality. It'd be great, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, let's hope so. Yeah. There's, there's so nice. many benefits. It's mad. It's the, the smallest of things that we that we didn't appreciate it was just simply being able to go to a coffee shop and have a coffee. Imagine this, that was like <laughs> the smallest of things, isn't it? Just the smallest of things. Yeah, what, we've all... We'll, we'll come. To, we'll all hopefully come to appreciate those things. What's, what's uh, the yeah. what's the what's the one thing you missed the, the most? Say, I, I think I've you know I've missed uh, seeing seeing friends. Yeah, I mean, yeah, as yeah. I say, the, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. None of us, certainly on the World Seniors Tour, it's, uh, none of them are playing, you know, full time for their jobs. So it's a, it's a choice, and uh, yeah. they enjoy getting together. And as I say. All these things are great, virtual meetings and being in touch, but sometimes it, you know, yeah. it'll be great. Yeah, to right. Each other yeah, yeah, right. How are you? No. Yeah. It'd be lovely to shake someone's hand again. How silly, <laughs> how ridiculous does that sound? I know. It, yeah. Great. And I think it's something that has to happen, you know, it really does, but like it hopefully happens soon. But, um, mm. but, uh, Jason, I want to thank you very much for coming on. I really enjoyed having the banter. I'm going to show the video that you've done. Uh, I have it here. Okay. I'm going to show everybody the video. And you can look back on this. And if anyone wants to comment and stuff like that, you can. Or if you want to get in touch with Jay, you'll probably uh, uh, look him up on his Facebook. Or how can they contact you if they need to know anything? Well, every, every day we do these challenges on the World Senior Snooker Facebook page. So okay. I'm sure Steve to make sure a link goes up. Um and yeah. if you go back on them and you dig back far enough, you can find Stevie's attempt. So that's uh, that'll be worth, worth five minutes of your life there. <laughs> Just, that. No, listen, he's, he's an absolute top lad. He does a, he does a lot to promote snooker yeah. in Ireland. And he does. Go play. So, uh, but, and, and he can he can sing a bit as well. I'll give him that. Yeah, just just a little oh. bit, just a little bit. If, yeah, you, if, if you're going crazy, <laughs> 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 all right. Well then, Jason, I'm gonna I'm gonna pl- I'm gonna play this. And uh, thanks very much for coming on. I really enjoyed talking to you. All the best. Lovely talking to you. Stay safe, everyone. All right. Cheers. Thank you. Terrible time. See you then. Bye bye. Bye bye. All around the world are looking after us, watching every breath we take, and watching over us. On behalf of all snooker players all over the world, we thank you. This is the biggest single challenge this country has faced since the war. And I in no way minimize the continuing problems we face. Every breath you take and every move you make, every thought you break, every step you take, I'll be watching you.
It's kind of how you're not around. Know you're in heaven, smiling down. Watching us, we pray for you. Every day, we pray for you. Till the day we meet again. In my heart, where I keep you, friend. Memories give me the strength I need to proceed. Strength I need to believe. Give anything to hear half your breath. But for now, we're still living our life thanks to the end. H.S. What? What? go taking you back with uh there we go a great song for the nhs by all the snooker players that we had we had on and uh we're going to be going uh over to uh we're going to be going off to ocean now in just a second uh we're going to we're going to get them live on the uh on the on we have them live on the screen we make them we'll make them live now in a second and uh we haven't we haven't we have them on the line but uh, we just we just we just make them uh, visible to everyone in the world now in just one sec due to technology you know yourself Hey, Oshane, how are you doing, bud? How's it going, Anthony? All good, all good. How are you? Good, good, good. I'm going to make you visible to the rest of the world. There we go. He's on board. He's (laughs) on board. You're very welcome uh, to the show here tonight. How are things with you? I'm doing good. Okay. Yeah, it's not bad. Not, not, not a bad day today. No, Maybe it's actually not. Now run it was. Yeah. Yeah, for a run. Keeping it, keeping it lit. Keeping it lit. Yeah, no, I have. um, Oh, yeah. Yeah, no. uh, So, have you been there? You're still keeping up the training and stuff like that. I know you're out running. By... Training every day. I've trained every day for about, I'd say, 24 years. I'd say I'm, there's about 20 days in 24 years that I haven't trained. And that's just really, really random. But yeah, every day, every day, I'm keeping up all the time. Just It, it keeps my head right. And obviously, it keeps my body right, you know. Yeah. Uh, mind, body, and soul. I'm, I'm all have, about it. You know, you I know? have to start going back doing a bit of training myself. I'm starting to fall apart. All the gyms and all the <laughs> right, I used yeah. to be a gym head, but like, I just, when the day all closed, I really, I really need to turn myself into more of an outdoors kind of uh, person, more so okay. than relying on the gym. So, so you and what do you do? Do you do any boxing? Just no, I don't. No, it's just keeping, I just keep it fit. Stuff. Yeah, weights and all that. And um, I, I basically sing for a living. That's what I do. And that's how I love really? the likes of Steve and all these guys, Steve Carroll. And, yeah. Yeah, that's what I do. I do. That's what I do for a living uh, myself, yeah. you know what I mean? And uh, so you have to kind of keep fit. But like, I haven't been there. Uh, I haven't been up too much and I really just have to get out in the mornings and get up and do it. What time do you get up in the morning now when you go training? Do you get up in the morning? Are you an evening person? What sort of? No, I'm not, I'm not like Rocky or anything like that. I don't, I don't did, get up did, 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 did. like that. Yeah, all the, the two eggs, the two eggs and the burgers. And that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that like. <laughs> no, but what I do is I, I try to train before work though. So uh, like I, I get up at, at seven and, and then I'll, I'd, uh, I do my training for an hour and then I probably do another training then after work then later on the night you know so I'm 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 kept I'm kept busy uh, and and my job I'm a, a, a boxing development officer 
uh, IIBA and the and the council. Uh, uh, that's that's their, their gig. They, they've heard it. there's there's five of us on, on our team, and we go around uh, different schools in uh, disadvantaged areas, and we and we were basically like mobile PE teachers, but we just right. teach teach the kids boxing, you know. Right. Okay. Yeah. I had um I had uh, Aaron, I had Alan Brown on. Now he's uh he's more Muay Thai Muay Thai. I had him on there right. the other day as well. You know, and uh, just an incredible amount of work you guys put in getting ready for a fight, getting prepared. People and people oh, don't yeah, yeah. people don't understand. I was I was on I was doing something silly enough. Just box exercise over in the over in the gym, and we were just doing box exercise. Right. And then we do sparring and all that afterwards and all that sort of stuff. And people don't realize how much energy it takes. For that two to three minutes, how 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 incredibly exhausting that is. So when you're on a full full combat, like we were only going to say, you know, 60 percent, just you know, stupid jabs, and we give each other a good slap from time to time, but that's just part of. <laughs> but like, um, uh, like, but what what I found, like, you'd be puffed out. We don't. We were only doing two two minute round bouts. And you'd be so exhausted. Right. You, you're doing you'd be three minutes all the time. Yeah, three minute round bouts. Yeah, yeah. And you'd be doing those all the time. And people don't realise. And they're shouting at the telly, go on, go on, at they're at the ring and stuff <laughs> like that. And they say, go on, go on. You say, you fucking do it. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. They don't realise how. Funny you know. thing is, I, I, I started so like I was 30 when I started, you know? So yeah. uh, it was a bit mad because. I didn't know how to handle myself uh, when it comes to the when it came to pacing myself. So, for, lucky enough, my first four, five or six fights were four round fights, which is and uh, I I think I had three knockouts in my four, in my first three fights. So they didn't actually go the distance, which was good for me because I I, did, I remember always hearing that you had to keep your hands up so I, I always had my hands up and that <laughs> just took so much energy you know yeah and keeping your hands up all the time takes so much energy now the, the more i start fighting and be and becoming accustomed to to boxing uh i learn little tricks how to how to like you don't always have to keep your hands up once you're out of range but at that at that stage i didn't really know i just had to yeah. keep my hands up all the time and all that so it was just draining i, I, was, yeah, I was absolutely I, draining. I, i'd be getting yeah we used to be over there getting uh we had a the teacher which was his name was will now he's very experienced he's he does all the uh karate and all that sort of stuff he does all that sort of stuff as well and he was saying oh look yeah. The, the main thing in boxing and all that, it's not, don't stand there and take the digs. Your job is to get the least amount of, you know, uh, digs thrown at you. Don't, don't try to be a man and go in and get it. You know, you're not, you're not collecting them. <laughs> the whole idea is to stay, <laughs> is to stay away from like the other guy, not let him get near you and, and attack when you have to, to do all that. The and main all, thing about boxing is, is how not to get hit. That's it. That's, and he was, that's te- what boxing is. Yeah. Fighting is different. Now, now, unfortunately for me, I was more of a fighter. So, so, uh, yeah, yeah. But, but like, it worked in my favor because I, I, I was that kind of, that I was that kind of scrapper. But I would have rather not taken the hits in the head. To be honest with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's no worse. Yeah, you get, yeah. When you, when you first start. When when I first started doing the boxer size, man, I know I'm only talking about boxer size, but I kind of I kind of get what you what you were saying when you when you were starting off, and the natural thing to do when someone's giving you the is to turn your head away and. You're, you're told that's the worst thing to do don't do that <laughs> yeah. don't do it yeah. don't turn your head away either take the dig yeah. or go down but take it but, but don't slip, slip in the punches don't turn, turn away turn yeah. head, if you turn yeah. away you're going to get in the, you're gone <laughs> yeah I, I was I was learning all this like uh, bit by bit it's all just uh, you know like use this information but I'm just for people who don't box and they don't realise what you guys go through um, training for all that sort of stuff now there was one that, that I uh, I was told that you actually went through a fight and you actually had a broken leg and you didn't realise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't realise. I, I actually fought Amir Khan that, that night. Um, I went into the went into the fight um, confident enough. Like I was, I, I'd seen Khan fight. He's, he's brilliant. He's, he's so fast. He actually, the, even to this day, like fastest, fastest boxer I've ever fought. And I fought a few world champions, but he was quick, quick. Kind of like Tyson. Um, Tyson just goes in. Uh, Tyson goes in for the kill, doesn't he? Straight away. No, he doesn't, I wouldn't like to be on his. I wouldn't like yeah. to be on the receiving end of that guy. He no, is. A heavyweight, though. He, he is, is he's, just he's power, too, isn't he? <laughs> Holy oh, shit, Bob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. crazy. But yeah, Bukan was uh, particularly quick, really, really fast. But uh, 
I had I had it um like the game plan was to go in and and throw looping shots to the top of his head because yeah. when we saw ever saw him go down it was shots to the top of the head or around the temples of his head and so um I went in and things are going well for the first couple of minutes and he hit me with a good shot and wouldn't have been a shot that would have knocked me knocked me down I'd, I'd never been down before that I don't think and I just felt my my ankle my ankle twisting in behind me and then my whole leg f- f- folded over. I was going, oh no, that's after breaking because I could hear it, you know. I, I this is only like I suppose about four uh, about two minutes into the first show. I was going, oh, this is so embarrassing. So yeah, I got yeah. up by the help of, by the help of the the ropes, and uh, I had to just put on the brave face. Try to I tried to take a step out, and uh, the second step I took out, I fell down again. He didn't even hit me. So I went down, I'd say I went down about four times and I got back up the four times. And then the very last time, then Mickey Van, who was a referee, who'd, who'd uh, refereed some of my fights before and would have known my form that I wouldn't have gone down ever before, uh, just jumped on me. And as he jumped on me, he fucking wrecked, wrecked me leg again. Like, I was like oh, just get off me. We get just, off me, yeah. Like, he effectively stopped the fight uh, because he, he didn't know what was what was wrong. And then uh, I was like, oh, such a horrible night because then the following day, then uh, so they had they had me uh, in the in the a dressing room about uh, it was about nearly it was probably a half a mile away from the ring. Yeah, I was actually there with bags, and I was I was limping towards. So I had to get down to my dressing room with a broken leg, and obviously I didn't know it was broken at the time. But the, the following day, I was I was uh, I got the the plane back to Dublin. Went straight to the hospital and uh, you managed and, uh, to get a plane. <laughs> a, spir- a spiral break in my leg, uh, about eight eight centimeters up. It, it kind of went like that all the way up through me, through my fibula. So uh, yeah, I was out for a out for a, for a few months. But um, but as as I said, to you, I don't take a day off training. So when I was put in the cast. I did five miles on the crutches, just running on the crutches. Five. Like, so was, yeah, I'm a bit, I'm a bit mad like that. A bit of a warrior, yeah, 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 yeah. Wouldn't like to meet oh, you yeah. in the chipper. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, you. <laughs> no, no, yeah, but like that, that's, but that's, that's like determination. You know what I mean? That's I tell you, yeah, getting exactly. on a plane and stuff like that with a broken leg. I mean, that's. Uh... Oh, my man, it was, it, it was now you, you, I remember. You you're know? originally from Tallaght, are you? Yes, yeah, right. And yeah. then you moved yeah. to Port Marnock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, see, I know everything about you, you see. But like, <laughs> where, where, so, where's you from? I'm from Finglas. Are you from Finglas? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. I work in Finglas now. Oh, do you? Finglas and Bally, one of my areas now for, for yeah, yeah. So I, I'm up at Canis's school in the, in the know, village there. I know the one, yeah. Yeah, I'm all, all over. All over fingers a lot of the time. Yeah, teaching. You know, trying try to teach kids, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you, do, you, uh, do you have your own club or anything like that? You're, what club are you involved with? Or what way do you... No, I'm, I'm not. Well, I, I'm, I'm involved a little bit with um, with Bad Oil Boxing Club, which is kind of out, out around my way. I'm I started start off Gym, years yeah. ago. I don't know if you know, it's St. Saviour's uh, Boxing yes, Club. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I started it's off in there. Aaron, with the Aherns and all uh, that. Ah, stuff. These put me in the ring. I slapped her. I used to go in there and get slapped around, you know, and... <laughs> I used to feel do, do you know the bit do you know do, do you, when you go in doing the shadow box and you feel like a when you only start you go what's all when this all about start. when you only start you don't realise what that's for and you go in you feel like a, you know it's yeah, to, it's yeah. to get your form and to get like you know the whole thing you know the run you yeah, know what I mean that, is, that as well as you know you know the the cool little hissing sound that they make yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? now, there's a method to the madness with that see a lot of people think that okay that's that's a weird boy. Everybody else is doing so. I better do it. But yeah. when you're ex, ex, when you're expelling the air from your from your body, you're tensing up your muscles. So you're going, right. ah, and you're 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 tensing up your muscles. So if you get put if you get punched as you're punching out, know, it's not going to affect you as badly if you're already out of air. Yeah, I know what you mean. Because yeah, if you're sucking in, so you, you yeah, wind, so you, you won't winded. you won't get winded. Because exactly. you have your stomach exactly. tense up, and it's bang, you can that's take right. it. Yeah. You can take yeah. it. Well, that, that's the that's the form of it. That's what it's supposed to be for. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now the other thing that I learned, and it was it was uh, it's good for timing, is skipping in boxing, and people don't oh, realize yeah. skipping is good on. Yeah. That is that's another yeah. that's another. That's a great exercise. That actually. is a great I exercise. Do that often, what I do now is uh, it's, my my knees are really bad. I was a footballer before I started boxing, you know. So I was all on the football scholarships in the states. I was actually going to ask you about that. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, but I my knees my knees weren't bad because simply 
football players like knees that <laughs> end up pretty crap in the end. Yeah, they do. So yeah, they wear down the I'm cartilage. Out, yeah, exactly. Yeah, right? yeah. So when I'm out running, I take a, a wider oh. step when I'm running. So nowadays, what I do is I skip. I actually skip uh, five mi- five miles, uh, and like as if I'm as if I'm running, but I have a skip and rope now. I look like a nut job, <laughs> nut job. But, right, right. Uh, I, 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 I go. Uh, I go th- uh, maybe four four kil- four kilometers into from where I or, I'm in uh, Kinsini. Um, I go into Malahoy Village, which is about four kilometers away, and I come four four kilometers. Yeah, it's lovely. It's lovely. It's so, lovely out there. It's lovely out there. Yeah, it's nice out there. Lovely, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Um, what's, uh, what's someone saying? Uh, I just wanted to see what someone else was saying here. Um, so, yeah, I just missed the question there. Me normal, me normal. Um, where I see all the people's, uh, I can only see about four or five texts at a time. We're not going down my yeah, feed because right. I normally have a, a feed and loads of stuff. Uh, no, I don't know who I have ringing the show. I don't know who that is. So I'll, I'll just see who it is. It could be. There's a guy who rings me show. His name is David. I'll just see if it's him. Just, just see who it is. Yeah, we, see. we say hello. Hello. Yeah. Who's that? It's a dog walker. Oh, it's David. <laughs> Ushin. Oh, Ushin, this is David. He rings, he rings the show all the time. He pops in for about five minutes. And uh, <laughs> he always says hello. So th- th- this is David. David, hello. How are you? Well, I'm just in the middle of talking to Ushin at the moment. I'm, All right. Yeah. I'm in the middle. I'm in the middle of an interview. Yeah, well, I can't hear him. Is that okay? Yeah, you're going to relay what he says. <laughs> no, he's got. He's got. He's out walking with the little dog. He's gonna di- he's gonna disappear for a minute. He's walking his little dog. He said he'd go ahead. So we get him down a few. We get him in a few minutes. He now only rings in and we have a bit of banter, you know. Uh, right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's, where where is he from? He's from actually he's from uh, Tala, but he's in the Kingswood and Tala. You know the Kingswood there. Okay. Yeah. 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 That, that that little. That's kind of, they were kind of rivals with us in Kilmarnock. Oh it, yeah. We always used to say that they were they were more than dark and you know <laughs> King, King, Kingswood and and uh, and Kilimanjaro were quite side by side, but they were they were a little bit more to more to the side. So uh, I, I think I think a King, Kingswood is I think the 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 official uh, I think that's officially Clondalkin, but yeah, I might I might be wrong, but I always uh, thought uh, that was Clondalkin. Um, do you know what? I wouldn't. I wouldn't think it's called dark. And now, now it's F because it's yeah. it's now. I uh, know it's a lovely estate now. It's a lovely, lovely yeah. estate there. Yeah, the pub and all there is lovely. Yeah, it's great, great little, great little spot. You know, I wish that pub was over yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for a good yeah. boozer. You know what I mean? Now, every, everyone must be looking at me because I br- I bring me gems and see me gems in there behind me. I bring me Jemmy into the. Yeah. I, I look at. I, I'm not even messing. I need to probably go off this and start drinking something else. <laughs> That's all right. I bring it into the studio. I don't. Know. Do, you, do you drink yourself? Yeah, I have. I have a few drinks. Yeah, ah, beers yeah. are. Beers are. Um, my my missus is uh, is Slovakian, and she has this thing called Tatra Tatra tea. What's and that now? No, it's it's strong. It's strong stuff. It's kind of a liqueur kind of thing, but it's uh, right. yeah, actually what what used to happen. This is how, how it was kind of uh, uh, made. Was uh, the the people who used to go out hiking and uh, they would put it in their in their tea and then warm the cockles of your hair. <laughs> that's what I remember you say. You know? so <laughs> warm the yeah. It's, it's, re- it's really really is it's strong stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah like the like the Russian people like their vodka. So uh, yeah, yeah, they sure do. Yeah, yeah. yeah so like we all have we all have our. Uh, but I always tell the story. It's probably in me blood because. Uh, one, my granddad worked in Jemson for 44 years. Oh, right, yeah. Two, my ma used to put Jemson in my bottle when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember that, do you? I got you. Remember that yeah, when, you, yeah. every, when you were teething and that? <laughs> hey, get that. I think the old ways was the better way, do you? Do you know what I mean? No, you can't even give, you, you can't even give the kids gripe water anymore. They'll take the alcohol out, take them the, take the bleed, they'll take the fun out of it. You know what I mean? My yeah, ma used you know, to... My, my, uh, my, aunt, uh, my uncles, a couple of my uncles have uh, worked in Guinnesses. Right. So Guinnesses was always a good, a good, uh, a good company for, for our family. Not, not, my dad, but my uncle and his kids work in Guinnesses now as well. So it's quite a, 
Yeah, yeah. Thanks for that, right, Jimmy? Good, good, good. The old Guinness, the old Guinness. So, how, what, like, how did uh, all this uh, for the stuff affect all what you were doing? I've just took away everything from you at the moment, and it's just trying and trying and trying. Well, I'm I'm trying at the moment, but what I'm doing for the for the job at the moment is that I'm I'm, I'm I've got a, a gym out my back out my back, so I go into the gym and I record some stuff for the kids. You know what I mean? Right, so right. I uh, so I, basically I do some exercises. And that so kind basically, of you're kind of you're kind of. It's basically like a mini course you're giving them. Basically, you're showing them the steps. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. That's something you could develop yeah. like into a course where people can do online stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah you could. You probably could, all right. Um, yeah. The t- thing about it is that like boxing obviously is very intimate because you have to be very, very close to to knock any crack out. But like, yeah, like yeah, yeah, fight, yeah. Fight, you know, boxing, <laughs> boxing, boxing. <laughs> but um, uh, at the same time, uh, obviously. We're, we're under these restrictions because of COVID and and that and that's fine. But so to to make sure that the kids are, are still getting their yeah. training in, yeah, yeah. we're showing them how to shadow box properly. We're showing them different uh, conditioning exercises, that kind of stuff, and how to how to throw proper shots. Uh, whether you're jab or your backhand or your hook or your rubber cut, you know. So we we. We're, that's kind of what we're at at the moment. Like, there's there's only a certain amount of stuff that you can do with with them online. Though you have to get them into practice. Yeah, you know? of course you do. Well, no, yeah. What do you what do you think of? Um, I don't know how true it is of McGregor retiring again. Do you think it's it's? Um, yeah, I, 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 I heard of it. Well, it came. I they, they, it was on it was on his Twitter. So. It, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't a, know much about about him actually. I, I, yeah. I don't. I'm not into the MMA really. So, have you ever tried did you, any anything to do with the MMA at all, or were you always just a boxer? I, I was I, when I used to live in the states. I, I uh, was asked would I could do the MMA. Right. <clears throat> and, did you try uh, it? It was something that I thought about. But I was a school teacher over there, you know. And yeah, the, when I when I thought about doing something like that, uh, you know, I was telling you that I train every day. Yeah. The with with boxing, at least you might get a a black eye or something like that and that's fine but if I if I was to break my toe my little toe <laughs> or my finger yeah. I'd be able to train and I wouldn't be able to do my normal training you'll be able to do your thing that's fine or whatever you know or a few bruises here and there but broken toes and, and teeth and freaking uh, fingers I, I, I would I, like that that would put me on the back foot big time you know so I'm not I, I'm just not into it really you know yeah 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 you yeah. into it yourself are you uh, and we started said again are you into it yourself? Is that are you into the MMA? No, no, no. I, 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 I'm not actually into like I don't do it as a sport, but I, I do actually yeah. like it. Yeah, I do actually like watching it. And um, uh, the guy that I had on, uh, Aaron Brown, is kind of well. He's more into Muay Thai, and uh, he's on. Now he kind of just I know Aaron a long time, and uh, he just got introduced to it. And did you ever get one of those guys? He just he was just putting. It's like a duck to water. All of a sudden, he was just winning bells. He just. It was just, it, it was made for him. It was just, he just right. slotted right. in and, you know, it, it, it was it was just crazy how he just talked to it. He just, he started out of the blue and started winning just out of the blue and started, like, he, it was just everything, he just done everything. It was just sh- shockingly out of the blue how he done everything, you know what I mean? So yeah. I had him right. on. Yeah. How old is he now? Sorry? How old is he? Uh, he's about, I think he's about 28, 29 Okay, he'd be in his prime, so that's great. Jane. Yeah, yeah. I so, even sat until it was 30. <laughs> 40, well, do you know what? I'm that's 46 now. 46, mm-hmm. Jane. I'm 50. I'm 50 in next week. 50 next right. week. Okay. Yeah, yeah. look, bleeding Lego. How's that feel? <laughs> I don't know. I'll tell you when I'm 50. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah, yeah, but like, that's, that's all the crack, you know what I mean? That's what you have to do. But, um, the. Yeah, I wouldn't mind going back training and going back down the 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 boxing. I mean, it's something that I, I do like it, but I don't know if I do it as in going in for fights. But like for as a physical mm. exercise, it's like it's 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 all about weight. It really uh, top is top of the pops for 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 fitness. It's top of the pops. But uh, you know, you probably wouldn't be you wouldn't be allowed uh, go in uh, fifty years old to 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 fight. No, fit for the scrap heap, scrap heap. <laughs> oh, get, oh, no, I'm not even allowed into a gym now. They just put, just get down today. There's, there's a wheelie bin over there. You can get in there. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I have to go. I have to go back down to the train. I'm generally 
I'm generally all right, you know. I mean, generally all right, you know. But uh, so, what's next on the agenda now? Be- be- before I let you disappear into your depths of darkness and get some of that lovely alcoholic beverage into you, whatever it is. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm uh, well. I'm actually writing a book, you know. My, uh, oh, my story. My story is quite unique um, because, as I was saying, I got I only got into boxing properly when I was about thirty years old. You know, I was as I said, I was over in the states for a while. Uh, I was doing the. I was on my football scholarship, um, that went well. I got degrees in uh, political journalism and P- and physical education, so uh, done well. And that, but then I fell in hard times. I actually lived in the back of a car for a little while, and uh, I, I just uh, I was back in the back of the car one night. And I was just praying, and I just said, "Oh, what am I going to do here?" And I just right. hap- I happened on a on a boxing club. I just went down to a boxing club. I said, "Listen." I'll fight anybody from for money. Can you can you put me in against anybody? So, and he's one of these Don King kind of characters. Oh yeah, no problem. I'll put you in against this guy. It's gonna get me battered, you know. So, but I fought your man, and he he was much more skillful than I was. Right. I was just tougher, you know. And I I persevered, and I kept on coming for him. And he was wondering what how how I kept on coming because he was hitting me with everything, you know. And I hit him with a big overhand right. It was real sloppy. But I saw his legs buckle and I went in and I actually the referee came in and stopped the fight. So I had one win, one knockout, and I was walking out of the ring and a principal of a school called uh, Phil Cunningham came up to me. He was uh, says, I believe you're a qualified school teacher. And I says, yeah, but nobody's messed with my green card. I'm, I'm out living in the back of a car. And then he says, I'm in for an interview like uh, next week. My PE teacher left in an office. I just blessed me so I was going... This is mad because yeah. twenty minutes, like so. Twenty minutes later, like I'm a, I'm a, 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 a teacher by day and a fighter by night, you know. So that is that. You know what that, 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 that a story. That's a story right there. That's a right. I love, I love rags the richest stories. I'm always interested in them. I love yeah. them. I love when the underdog comes up. There's just something about yeah. it. Just it's more inspiring to me. I hey. Uh, I, I don't begrudge I don't begrudge like people it. with a silver spoon in them out, but I love seeing <laughs> I got you, yeah. I, I love seeing the people yeah. the the underdog coming up. It's great. You know what I mean? It's 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 yeah. I love like, seeing that. Unfortunately though, I I didn't I didn't win a world title but in my fifth fight I fought in the MGM Grand and I, I fought Julio Cesar Chavez and I felt like I bet him. People can see that on, on YouTube and uh, most uh, most people thought I bet him and his, his father who was the probably the best Mexican they ever put on a pair yeah. who said that it was his toughest I was his toughest fight which was great to hear you know and then uh, then I won a, a, a North American State title uh, in about my 10th fight and then I won my won an Irish title then they, I fought on the, on the card of a Bernard Dunn fight on, live on RTE and I won my Irish title then back in uh, 2006 right. and then so I fought about another four or four, four, five world champions and uh, I got split decisions with two world champions, which was hard for me because I felt like I beat them. Yeah. But uh, and of course, if I had beaten them, it would have changed my whole life, you know. But then, and then I had the uh, the infamous night against Amir Khan. I broke my leg, and everything started going downhill from that from that night on. Then you know. So, so uh, like, yeah. So see a book, okay? Now yeah. you have the full book completely finished. I've written the book. Now it's just time to look for a publisher. So, yeah, I was so going to say. Does anybody listening out there? I was going to uh, say that to you. So you have, story. So the book is done. The story is done because that is a, like straight away. It's an interesting story. I mean, living out the back of a yeah. car, going in looking for a fight for money, and then you know becoming a team. I mean, that's movie stuff right there. You can make it a is, movie, yeah. you can yeah, make a movie is, out of that. that. That I mean, so it's a very interesting. Um, Story, so if that, yeah, it'd be great. I'd love to see if you got a publisher, it'd be great. I really, yeah, uh, too, yeah. I'd love to see that and making a few. I've got, got, got a couple of a couple of people offer, offering uh stuff, but um, just the, the deals are not good at all. And and uh, like I, yeah, because I've written the book, you normally when a publisher comes in, he has his, he already has his writer, he has his publisher, he has his editor, he has this, that, and the other. And I've, I've kind of taken out the middle man because I've written the book already. So people are, are already on the back foot saying, uh, I don't know about that because we, we wanted to do it this way and that way. But this is my, my spoken word, you know, so this is yeah. what happened, you know, but I'm, I'm protective over it in that sense. Because one, one, one of the, one of the things is, uh, 
it's just like picking yourself up off the off the floor and uh, and getting yourself back in action. And it's really great to see that you you've done that. You know what I mean? And uh, you're still training. You're still out you're up for the fight. And uh, oh, yeah. I I uh, do you know what? I'll, I'd love to go and watch it. You'll have to let us know when the next fight is. And wh- where can people? Um, find you on Facebook, you know, I me mean, they find you this on your own, you set your page. Um, get, get me on Instagram at uh, at Gale Force or Shane Fagan. Gale, Gale, Gale Force, yeah, that's right. That, I actually seen that, and yeah, Gale yeah. Force, yeah, that's a deadly name. The great, what is that? G A E L Force, so the, okay, the, uh, Irish version of Gale, yeah, at Gale Force or Shane Fagan, yeah. Right, so and, and they can oh, check yeah. you out there. And if there's any publishers out there, give yeah. this man, give this man a deal. That's a that's a movie yeah, stuff. That, <laughs> that's movie stuff right there. You know what I mean, big time. <laughs> yeah. But uh, uh no, but uh, Ocean, listen, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. I really enjoyed talking yeah, to you, man. and I love the nice story. Man, and I wish you the very best and uh, stay safe. Thank you very much. All right, Thank you. Cheers. Thanks. 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 Thanks, thanks for coming on. All right, yes, I'll, yes. I'll see you in a little bit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a d- d- big thank you to, uh, uh, big thank you very much. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. There you go. Absolutely brilliant stuff. Uh, I love that story. Uh, that's real movie stuff. That's real Rocky Balboa stuff. There, I would love, uh, for that man to get a, a deal. I really would. Now I'm gonna be coming back with you now in a minute. We're gonna be have Rudd's rants. We're gonna be coming back from now in a second. But I have uh, a song pick of the week that I've picked. So we're going to have Rudd Rud Stewart all the way, Rudd's rants all the way from Sweden. He's going to be coming on and we see what he has to rant about uh, tonight. And uh, we might even talk about a bit of music, you know what I mean? Because that's what we both actually do, but you never know. But I'm going to play this song. It's an original song. It's called Cocoon. And it's obviously, as you can probably tell by the title, uh, it's written by a girl called Polly. And uh, this is the song choice, the Walker Talker song choice uh, for this week. So here it is. I'll be back with you now right after this.
there we go all we want to do is to cocoon you there we go that's uh, the song choice uh, pick of the week and uh, so we had to we had to get that in there didn't we yeah it's, I thought it was a great song so uh, I wanted to get it in and uh, have a bit of and enjoy that so let me see um, I'm going to be going with um, I have Rud- Rudders he's going to be coming on now I think he can hear me uh, can you hear me there Rudders are you uh, on in the background there can you now? Can you hear me there? Can you you can? If you got your microphone, your own microphone turned on. Hopefully you can. Uh, you can hear me. He's all the way over in Sweden. Yes, we're going to get him on now in a second. If we can get a. Uh, hopefully he has his microphone uh, edged on. Yeah, we just need to. Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Okay. Let us see. Uh, okay, we're at the we're at the, we're at the main, okay. We're having having people on there a second ago on our Zoom. So I'm just checking out Rudders here. We're just trying to get them on here now. We have them. I have them in the in the visuals. So if you just touch on your microphone, can you hear me? <laughs> He can see me. I'm just trying to get him. Uh, we're just trying to get him on board here. You know, we'll get him on board now in a sec. Uh, we'll get him on there bit by bit. Eventually, we'll, we'll, we'll sort. We'll sort him out. We'll sort him out. We get him on board. Uh, there we go. I see. Looking forward to uh, having a bit of banter with Rudd. So, can you? Uh, I'm just going to see if you can hear me. Can you hear me, Rudd? Can you hear me? He's just trying to... Uh... He's trying to get his head around the Zoom. Yeah, we can see him, but we can't hear him. Can you, can you hear me? Can you hear us? Can you hear me? Yeah, we're just trying to get him on here now. <laughs> He's putting away his headphones now. He had his headphones plugged in. Now, can you turn on your microphone there? As you, Go into your mic settings there and so we can hear you. He's, just, he's trying to set it up for us there now. No. We're after having a few people on the Zoom, so we're after being okay. Yeah, we can't, uh, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. Is your microphone on? We have him in the background there. Hang on, we'll, 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 let, we'll let you see him, will we? We'll try and get him on there. We're gonna, we're just trying to sort out his, uh, his microphone. Yeah. Rod Stewart is coming. Audio can't hear you. Connect to audio. Uh, 
connect to an audio. Okay, we see we, we see if we can get them get them on board. Where uh, are we going to our are we going to our audio here and have a look? Uh, there we go. We try this. Can you hear us now? All we want to do is cocoon you to two. Others. Uh, hopefully we can get them on board. If you have to have it, we have to have the banter. You know what I mean. Uh, selected microphone. Yeah, I mean we're all good. Uh, can you hear us there, Rod? No. He's just trying to set up. He's trying to. He's trying to get set up on his. Uh, on his Zoom. I mean, we're at the being having Zoom. I had two Zoom calls, so it must be on your end. Uh, yeah, microphone setting. Go to your microphone setting. Yeah. Uh, we we'll see what we can do to get him on. Because I'm dying to have a bit of banter with him here on the on the show. All we want to do is cocoon you. All right, I'll see if I can get him on. I'll see if I can sort this out with him now in just a, uh, a second. Uh, bum, bum, bum. <laughs> uh, call me again. Okay, we, we, we'll try and call him again. Uh, I think it's just uh, down to a, a setting. Um We'll text him here. I'll text him here because I'm dying to get him on the show. Uh, there we go. Hopefully you can... Uh, he's texting me back here. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. He can hear me, but I can't hear him. Okay, uh, okay, well, let's see if we can, we, if we can do, because, um, you should be able to hear us. Is, can you turn your, can you turn your microphone on over there, Rudd? It's your, I think it's just his microphone. Oh, we'll try and get him back on board now in a second. Uh, I was hoping to get him on board because we're being having a good good chats uh, with everybody. Um, let me see. Uh, I wanted to get him on board. I was really looking forward to getting him on board. I really want him on board. So uh, because we wanted to have a bit of banter because we had great banter last week, and uh, I'd really like to get him back on the show and uh, have because we want Rudd's rants to come back on. So let me see. I'll send him one more request here for him to come on the show because uh, we had a great bit of banter with him last week and uh, I'd like to have a bit of banter with him right now. So, okay, uh, let me see. All I want to do is cocoon you. <laughs> All right. Uh, there we go. I'll send him another, another, another schedule. Uh, there we go. Um, we go to our meetings and we'll just send it over to him again. He's all the way over in Sweden, so hopefully we can sort this out and get him on board because I'd really like to have him on board. And uh, he can hear me, but I can't hear him. So I don't know if he needs to turn on his... Uh, uh, turn on your mic. There we go. There we go. So I sent them over that. So we're going to see if we can get him on board. Now, so we'll just see what he, what he can do there on his end. And hopefully we can get him on board. And uh, I'm trying to get him to, so we can have a bit of bat and chant, uh, banter. So, uh, by the way, I never told you, by the way, that we're having uh, um, we're having a Italian 90 night on Thursday. And we have some super special guests coming up uh, on that on Thursday night. So, um um, we'll get Steve. Steve's going to put up exactly who we have on on tour tonight. It's going to come up in the comments there, and you can you can have a little look and see what you think of our lineup. We have a great lineup of uh, people that you very much well know uh, 
coming up in the show. So he's going to be, uh, we'll put that up in the text there of exactly who's going to be in our lineup. We'll throw it up on, um, uh, unmute your mic, Rudd. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I think as Rudd needs to unmute his microphone because he can hear me. Uh, I just can't hear him. I think he needs to just, just unmute his microphone, you know what I mean? Uh, There we go. I'm just there. Uh, it's only a second time to use Zoom. It's only a second time to use it, so I'm, I'm I'm absolutely hoping that we can get him on. Either that, we'll try. I'll try and get him on another way, in an unconventional way. We'll we'll get him on through uh, uh, another way if he can't come on that way. But he's going to try. We're going to try and get him on there. Um. Yeah. Dublin concerts. We have a, we have a young man there. Uh, he's going to be coming on. We have him uh, actually in the on the lineup of what's coming up. He's only fifteen, and uh, he's 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 putting on events and going to events and stuff like that. And he's really interested in the music scene. And the first thing I said to him, just make sure you get permission because uh, he's only fifteen. And I'm really the reason reason why I want to have him on the show um, is because. Uh, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can't hear you either. Sorry. Yeah, he's just he can't hear me neither. So um, okay, I'm not too sure what a setting is like. Um, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna ring him an unconventional way. I'm gonna ring Rudis. I'll be back. I'll tell you back back about. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna try and ring him on 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 this. This is a a different way of doing things. We're gonna we're gonna do this. And um, yes, okay. Let's see if we can do this. We're going to ring him in an unconventional way. We're going to ring him on Messenger. It's not the most secure. It's not the most secure platform to ring on, but we're going to try and do that. There we go, Rudders. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, I can hear you. Can you hear me? No, he's not getting me. No, he's not getting me there at all. Oh, hopefully we can get him on the show here. Uh, I'm going to send him one more image. Uh, let me see. We'll try and get him on again. I'm really disappointed that I, I haven't got him on the show as of, just as of yet. Um, let me see. I'll try one more, one more way. Not the way to go. Now, there we go. So yeah, we have that young guy coming on the show. He's only fifteen. Sorry about the. Uh, hopefully, we can get that Zoom sorted and we can uh, have a decent conversation. Because what I'll do with Rudders is we'll do that and we'll set it up and uh, make sure that we have it right. Um. Let me see. I know what I know. I know what we're going to do. I know what we're going to do. I'm going to um, drag in uh, another song for you. Um, all we want to do is cocoon you. Now, um, <laughs> this is what this is what you have to do. This is what you have to do to try and uh, get somebody on uh, on the show is to make sure that we have. Uh, make sure we have songs lined up, and I don't have any songs lined up because I took some of the my favorite songs uh, that I had lined up out of uh, my running because I have new songs coming up that I want to put into uh, the running, and that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm going to see if I can uh, if I can get him there now. And by the way, we have Jeff Keaton on tomorrow night, our medium. He's going to be on, and uh, so I'm looking forward to getting him on the show. As always, uh, he's going to be on here tomorrow and we start at 8 o'clock and normally the phones just go completely and utterly crazy. So uh, let me see. Uh, we had our song choice there. And let me see. Um, all we wanted to do was cocoon you. Um, bum, 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 bum. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll give one more. I'll give one more try to to Rudd to try and get him on the. I really want him on the show tonight, and uh, so I'll, I will. I will go to one more. Uh, extremity, extremity. 
Now, I'll play uh, one of my uh, one of my own songs. Will I? Will I play one of my songs while I try and get them on board? I will. I w- I'll play one of mine. Okay, we go. We go on to Spotify, Spotify, and uh, I'll play one of your song. One of my songs. One of your songs. I'm trying to say. Hmm? Yeah. Uh, we go on there, and I'm going to play a song while I'm just waiting to get uh, brothers on board. I'm going to try and get them on there now. Now, where is one of my songs? I'll get one of my own songs for a change because Facebook don't like you using um, loads of uh, songs that are uh, out there. Um, There we go. Now, I'm going to use this one. This one is called uh, Hold the Door. I'm going to play this for you. All right, this is my own song. And I'm going to do my best to get get him on now, okay? So I'll be back with you now after this. This is called Hold the Door. I'll be back with you now in a sec, all right? Don't 
on board ladies and gentlemen we have them on board oh my, oh my god yeah we're gonna make us all visible to the world here can you see me yeah i can see i'm gonna make you visible to the rest of the world now there we and go I can hear you. yeah and you can hear me as well you found out what the problem yeah. was well i called you now yeah that's okay i, I had you in there i don't know because uh, the phone's working fine Okay, okay. I don't know what happened to us. No idea, mate. It's me. I'm a bit stupid, you know that. No, just stop. We we have you here now. uh, But we're sorted now, aren't we? We've got a lot to talk about in short time as well. Yeah, yeah. So look, we'll we'll get it talked about. Let me see. Now, I just want to... Happy days. Um, Are you on a tab? What are are you on a tablet or what are you on? Now I'm on a Samsung, on a a Huawei, because it didn't work on my tablet. It didn't work on me on me uh, Apple on me iPad. All oh, right, I was going to say, do you see what ha- what happens when you turn it on its side? Can you go lengthways? I can go lengthways. That's what the wife always says to me. There we go. That's 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 always better. That's better. That's, that's what the wife always says to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hang on a second. I'm going to make you visible. Oh, for the re- I'm going to make. Now at least at least we have it sorted. That like uh, I think you accepted my email, did you? I did, yes. Yeah, and that way we can just we can just call each other at, at random, then you know, because what then? And I, and I don't need these stupid things in my ears. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, the day might walk as well. You know what I mean? Hang on a second. Now, one I can second. hear you nicely. Right now, I'm just going to make you visible to the to the rest of uh, the rest of the world. You're going to scare the people. You're going to scare everybody. Yeah, I'm going to scare everybody. In these terrible times. <laughs> Hang on a second. I just I need to turn off this sound. Uh, sorry oh, guys. Again. There we go. Me. There we go. We've loads of we've loads of videos Watch playing in the background. There we go. Don't lose me. There we go. We have you there now. Now we've loads of stuff. I don't okay. loads of technical issues going on tonight. But anyway, we'll we'll, oh. we'll earn them out. There we go. Now we're in the land of the living. So there we go. We're all happy. Yay! Happy Hello, mate. Yeah, all good. All you good. Much, you yeah. look much better without a beard. Much better without a beard. Did it's better without the beard, is it? Yeah, and I, I'm growing one out of sympathy for you. Ah, <laughs> I was able to grow my one in a month. I, I was able to grow a full beard in a month, or three, three weeks, and I had a beard. And uh, oh wow, yeah, I can. It just go- took me seven years. Yeah, I tell you, what, he was interesting. The boxer guy, weren't he? Yeah, yeah, that was an interesting story that he had, isn't it? I'll buy his book. I'll buy his book. Yeah, that living was... in back of a car and then fighting in me a car with a broken leg. Yeah, he's, it's he's... worth reading it just for those two things. <laughs> it was a movie in there, wasn't it? Definitely a movie. Well, Be... I'll tell you what, if you if you get hold of him, he can actually train me to fight LL Cool J. LL Cool J. And we're going to call it Taco, Taco Rudd against AJ Cool J. AJ, hey, hey. why why LL Cool J? What's the story there? He I... ranted, ranted rottenly, rottenly. I mean, this is great because we can talk openly. There's no censorship. I know we don't go too far. But he was ranting and raving, calling out all of us, saying that we were oppressive. And he did he did a rant. I shared it on my Facebook page, and oh. I took it down. So I shared it again and took it down. And oh. it was actually quite obscene. It was obscene. It was very yeah, insulting. Yeah. Oh, well, we, 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 we won't we won't put you in the ring with him then we won't uh, we won't we won't dredge too no, deep we won't dredge your, too your deep mate, your mate can train me your mate can train me oh that's all right yeah he could tra- he could do the training for you and then you can let us know how he's going on with that for you <laughs> well before i got fat so i had 49 fights so uh, i'm no did slouch. You? i'm no I did, uh, yeah i lost 48 but i'm no slouch i won one <laughs> <laughs> you won one but uh no. I were, I were all right. Yeah, and you weren't in the gym, you weren't in the gym for a little while, weren't you? 
Oh, yeah, but I mean, this is going back when I was young, so... No, you were in the gym not so long ago, not so long ago. Oh, yeah, 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 up until like you, until this COVID-19 came yeah, and that yeah, way, yeah. got stopped it, mate. Oh, yeah. I wasn't going to go to the gym and pick up weights and, you know, pick up some of these bacteria. The, the only, I yeah, miss, yeah. I miss, all, I, miss all, I miss all the leotards in Sweden. They all dress nice when they go to the gym. You know, they, they dress nice wherever they go, don't they? Ah, yeah, the yeah. Some of the gyms have have lovely looking women in them, all right, yeah, and lovely looking men. Everyone, oh, yeah. Everyone looking I mean, trendy. With, with Oh, With this grown-out hairdo, and people think it's Jimmy Savile come back from the grave. Do you know oh, what I mean? Shit. It's a bit, a bit risky. <laughs> <laughs> I, I used to watch all that as a kid. I thought it was great as a kid because we didn't know any better, but now we do. But, like, I used to watch all oh. that. Jim will fix it for Jim you. Jim will fix it. You were great. Uh, Jim will fix it for a great program. Yeah, and you get a badge, you know what I mean? Yeah, Jim fixed it for me. And then... Um, yeah, I bet he did. He fixed, bet it, did. He fixed it for everybody. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> But some of the shows, some of the shows going back then a little bit were brilliant. Like uh, you don't see them anymore. The real um, I love Benny Hill. It was kind of uh, touching on soft porn kind of till thing. Death was, till death does do part, they should bring it back now. The special editions for Black Lives Matters. Uh, <laughs> ben, Benny Hill. That were naughty. Yeah. Oh, it was, uh, 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 so uh, what's what we're calling and uh, Alf Garnet. I so Death Does Do Part. Oh, I don't, I don't like, Didn't you ever see that in Ireland? No, I didn't see that one, no. Oh, well, they were a big West Ham supporter like myself. Right. And uh, and he had uh, Paul Parker on it, a few of the coloured uh, football, uh, footballers on his show, and they were like, they were the, the resident racist. It was like so hardcore, but it was funny. Oh, because... yeah, back, back then, back then it was. Yeah, I was, I was talking with a couple of friends uh, yesterday who were uh, mixed race and coloured, and we were talking about everything that's going on. Because I wanted to know their take on everything that's going on. Because yeah. uh, obviously, you know, I'm, 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 I don't hold back with what I think. I'm what I think I say. I wear my heart on my sleeve. And uh, one of my friends, uh, you actually might know, an incredible uh, Lionel Richie impersonator. Uh, he actually called me and said that he he understands where I'm coming from, and he agrees with me totally. But he doesn't do social media. But he told right. me a little quick stuff when he was in uh, Sierra Leone, because his father was from Sierra Leone, and his mum, uh, Brummy. Um, I actually think I've seen a few videos. He's actually very, very good. Uh, does oh, he he's incredible. Does he play? Do, did you say he plays in Benidorm? No, he, 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 he tours all the theatres. He goes around everywhere. Uh, Malcolm I... Pitt is incredible. Malcolm Pitt is one of the best tribute artists there is. Yeah. And he's coming, over to, he's coming to Sweden. He's coming to Sweden this year. All right, yeah. There you go, you see. You could be with him and Meatloaf, mate. <laughs> yeah. Your friend Meatloaf is going over to the, the, the tribute. And Rudd. Yeah, and, and Rudd. Yeah, and Beatles. Yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah. Malcolm, he, he was in Sierra Leone. He told me the story he went and he met his brothers. He met his brother. And when they were running down there, when they were walking down the street, all the kids were running behind him, shouting, white man, white man. And he turned to his brother and said, who oh, they're talking about? He went, you. Because he were lighter skin tone. Oh, right, yeah. Okay. So he was, he was saying about, he felt he experienced racists Racism himself, so he's got he's got no time whatsoever for Black Lives Matter and and FEMA, whatever yeah. they're called. I mean, it's uh, I mean, I saw you and mate, he, 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 today, he, like what what's yeah, going on? Yeah, he he's he's a, he's a, he's a tan man himself. He's not exactly oh like, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah yeah. So like, I saw one of your posts. What's going down? I mean, what what is happening to the world today? Well, it I is mean, it is it is it is very in a week since I spoke to you. In a week since I spoke to you, yeah, it's it's gone even it's gone even more pear shaped. It's, it's, it uh, is it is a fairly scary, unusual place at the moment, and uh, I I really think it's it it's the worst I've seen it now in my lifetime. Like it's just in it's, my lifetime as well. It's just it's I'm a decade older than you. It's absolutely just I've never seen it so bad. I mean, um, I've never seen so like. It, like when they showed they showed all the streets of New York there uh, this morning, the guy went around with it, driving around a taxi driver driving around Manhattan, and every single shop in the entire Manhattan area was all boarded up. Every single one of them. And the, news the, the news don't the news the news don't the news doesn't show that. They don't show that. So you imagine that across forty states. So oh, so you have to imagine incredible. then all these people. Okay, they loot with all the shops and they got everything for free at the moment but there's going to be a payback when like you know taxes have to pay for that and uh, you know like... it's, it's not just that I'm, I, I, I agree with protesting as long as it's for a genuine reason and it's uh, and it's law abiding you know I mean yeah. they, they celebrate the, it, the, 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 isn't that what protesting is supposed to be isn't it isn't it supposed to no, be no well, just... they're protesting for a man 
regard, let's get this straight out there. Regardless of his background, nobody, nobody deserves to die that way. No, nobody. I, I, I understand the anger. No. I understand. Oh, big time. Oh, I got really animosity. angry. I got really angry when Me I saw it. Yeah. Me too. When uh, I saw it for eight minutes, calling for his mum and et cetera, et cetera, it was absolutely shocking. It was. I mean, nobody nobody should die that way. No. But when, when you see that he held a gun to a pregnant woman's stomach, five years, drug trafficking, 10 months, possession of cocaine, eight months, GBH, 10 months, he's not a model citizen. But yeah. that's, that, shouldn't, that shouldn't be anywhere in, that should be in the picture. The fact of the matter is, he was murdered, I, I think, in cold blood, by four police officers, but yeah. it was four thousand miles away. What's that got to do with Manchester, London, Dublin, uh, um, Stockholm, Gothenburg, Malmo? It's they've, they've hooked onto. They've, why did they? Why did? Yeah, they, you why, mean why, why is it travelling from city to city? Um, yeah, but why didn't they do anything about the seventy coloured girls who were kidnapped by the Polka Alarm, whatever they're called, not the band? And there were system. Oh, yeah, that was years. That, that was years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And why? Why didn't they protest that? You know, and I'm getting um, to a point where I know what you're saying. Yeah, uh, the, yeah, uh, that that was that's an interesting point. Yeah, but like the thing is, I think people just feel it, it, it's not so much that. I think they're just they're outraged at the what the police are getting away with. I think that's what well, the getting police with. are getting away with a lot. The police are getting away with a lot. Yeah, not, I, not I, I don't, I don't, I don't think people are talking about. I don't think it's. Um, I think it's specifically the way the police are treating. Um, Black Americans over in in, yeah. in America. I mean, every day, and people are just uh, people are tired of it, and uh, people are tired of just any sort. Like the police are there to protect, where you're supposed to be able to ring and serve just, and protect. Yeah, serve and, and protect. Like, when, 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 when you're in distress, or if somebody's robbing you, or you need you need some sort of assistance. I mean, they. I mean, when they, when they have cops who have no empathy and just keep drawing guns on people who are basically defenceless and armless, what, what's I I don't understand the point in that. You know, I mean, that's been going on for no, years right. and years, and everyone's sick of it, and the the whole world is sick of all that sort of stuff. Maybe it's, maybe it'll change. Maybe it'll make uh, seismic changes in America. You never know. Well, I think al- I think al- I, something. I think al- something does that change. Uh, well, I think it already has. I think it already has um, made. Um, people have made their voice heard and it's definitely, you know, it's, it's ringing out across the world and it, yeah. it, it's at a bad time though, because it is virus, you know what I mean? It's, you know, so the two things, it's just, that's what's making the world just so ups, upside down at the moment, you know, because yeah, we have, now we're going to find out, we're going to find out now if COVID-19 is real or if it's a hoax, because after you've had tens of thousands of people gathering together in close proximity, right. kissing, Hugging. If there's not a major spike, right. then we know that it was a con from day one. Which, so you, you, sorry, I know, I know, so, I know people who've, who've been ill, but I don't know actually anybody personally who's died from COVID nineteen. I know people have died from cancer. I've got four friends who committed suicide, but I don't actually know of anybody. And I know a lot of people, as you know, and right. I don't actually know anybody directly. I know people have had COVID, and they say it's like a very chronic bronchitis. Okay. So I believe the the actual virus is real. But I also believe that it's been exaggerated to a point where governments have to continue with the with the bluff now, because if they suddenly pull back and say we got it wrong, no one's going to take government serious again. Yeah, no. It's... Th- this is this is a major dilemma, right? and I also think that in September, unfortunately, when we're all going to be getting on our feet, who, not the band, but who are going to do another test and uh, do another simulation of a pandemic? So is that when? When wave two comes, as we all start working again, are they going to rip it off from underneath us again? Nobody's got any faith in government. I d- Nobody's I d- got any faith in police. Nobody's yeah. got faith in each other. I mean, it's 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 a shocking state of affairs. Shocking. Yeah, yeah. And people like Anthony Joshua don't help. Standing there, calling out his management, his promoters, his sponsors. Anthony Joshua made £80 million from right. boxing. And his promoters are white. His I, I, sponsorships are yeah, white. Yeah, I, did, I, I, didn't, I didn't see. I didn't see that. No, so I hope you oh no. I mean, it's, in LL Cool J's rant again. His rant was it was obscene. So I want to fill him in. I actually want to fill him in. <laughs> <laughs> I, won't, I don't have much but, chance because he, he's got a body like Adonis. Uh, all right, yeah, yeah. I look like Taco Man. I look like the Taco Man. You yeah, know he, I mean? he really is. He's in good shape. Yeah. No, but I, I just <laughs> no. What did you say? I don't. If if you look. I, 
I know you, there's just some people that you're naming out there, but like there's loads of people like um, just ordinary everyday people doing the same thing as as those guys that they're calling everyone out because like they just they want the police brutality to stop, and uh, I think. You know, like, they just want fairness. I, I don't think... It's not about colour anymore, you know what I mean? I don't think... They want fairness. I mean, people are being, like, you know, regular pullovers in America, as you see all the time. And oh, the police, yeah. The police, the police are, are so... Because they're armed with guns, over here where we are, there's, there's only certain police are armed with guns. But we haven't seen... Um, I've never seen, like... I've never heard of anyone or like anyone really being like, you know, like uh, murdered here. I'm trying to think like because I don't want to be. I'm just trying to think, you know, who, you know, somebody who's been murdered. Don't be politically by correct. Spit it out. No, yeah, I, w- I want to make sure that the information that I'm, I, ha- I don't really know yeah. of that level of people like um, I've only known. Um, I'm trying to think. I can't even think of anyone who was like just shot by police for no I mean, reason. You had your, your, your gang fighting in Ireland last a few years back when I was over. There was a big gang fighting. Yeah. But, I mean, you don't. We don't. We don't have the the level of pro- police brutality in Europe like they have in America. I mean, I've been yeah. victimised by the police in Spain because my dogs and refusing to wear a muzzle on my dogs. And there's a lot of racism. Police people laugh at me, but there's a lot of racism towards British people in Mallorca, for example. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's an inferior complex or what it is, but there's a there's a lot a lot of grief there. But the the level of violence that they use in America, uh, it goes back. I mean, my first experience of this was the hurricane, the boxer, when it was framed for murder. The oh, I've seen that. Well, I've seen, seen that story on the on brilliant, on, on, on the brilliant, news. Brilliant film, tragic story. They stole thirty five years of his life because a white yeah. copper had a beef with a black boxer who had more money than him. Yeah. basically. and I can understand why people are outraged because of all that goes on. I mean that that just that just really annoys me. That people like to spend the whole why, why rip down why rip down a statue of Winston Churchill, the greatest British man ever born, defaced, right. uh, and they defaced <laughs> it. And I can tell you now, this weekend, <laughs> this weekend coming on Saturday, yeah, and uh, and Fita, whatever they're called, and Black Lives Matter, are having another big protest in London. And I can tell you now, as a fact, that the Football Lads Alliance and the Army Vets are joining together in London to protect all the monuments. So if they go and try and deface them then, it's going to be chaos. But to see... Because you're talking about men in my age who've run pitch battles all their life and ex-military men who've served and yeah. spilt the blood. They're going to be defending all the monuments in, in London. Should that happen? Boris Johnson's disappeared again. Right, yes. The Khan's disappeared again. You know, I mean, what they're doing, did, they're going to defuse it. Trump could have defused that. We talked about it last week. Trump could have defused I, 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 it. I, 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 I reckon, I, I know you're a Trump fan. Now, I know that. No, yeah. and he's uh, wrong here, though. He's wrong but here. I think, he's wrong here. I, yeah, I think he really absolutely got the whole shooting match wrong. Big time. Oh, totally wrong. Totally wrong. He, if he, if, he should have came out immediately uh, and, and said, those four police officers are being arrested. Because yeah. what 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 went on there was absolutely shocking. And then the other thing that he got wrong was he wasn't being honest about the coronavirus and just saying, "Look, it's 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 worse than we thought. It's this, it's that." And just keep it. <laughs> he came out said it's going to magic, magically disappear. He got Drink it. some bleach. Drink some bleach. I mean, I mean those yeah. two, those two things. He yeah. just got it so wrong. Why? He just. I've been watching Trump, and he's been doing so well all the way. And these two things, he and just. Then, yeah. I, well, I, I think that these two, these two things combined, will bring him down. I think it'll be the end of his presidency. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I'm a right. massive fan. As you know, I made a record about it, which is released next week, actually, in America. Yeah, because you thought uh, he was still, you thought he was doing really well, and he was. Well, not, not just that, but I could associate with him because. You know, he's another billionaire, <laughs> a bit like me. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, I could, well, well, for some. Associate with him because. He spoke. He spoke to. He spoke to us. I went over the in in, uh, in what's it called? In, in incarceration. That's when you put someone in prison. Inauguration. I went over for that in Washington when he when he'd won. I went over all by myself. I went through customs with the Make America Great Again cap, a Trump T-shirt, and the the border control and the police thought it were hilarious that an English guy who flown in from Sweden had gone all the way to uh, America because he were a fan of Donald Trump, and none of them were. But well, they thought it were amusing, and they, they were taking a piss at me when they were checking my passport, you know. Right. And I've been a massive fan of him all along. And I think for the economy, and what he's been caught out now, all Trump is good at is economy. Yeah. And unfortunately, people 
He had the black vote, he had the Hispanic vote, he had uh, Middle America's vote, he had Working Class America's vote, and he was winning over the elitist as well. But now in these two moves, I think he's blown all of his chances of getting yeah. a second turn. Yeah, I think, I think he and probably what was has. what are they going to get? Creeping Joe. I mean, it's going to be boring without Trump, you know? What's he gonna, who's going to tweet? Well, I don't, you know? I, I don't think it's about... I don't think it's about... Uh entertaining us I think it's about you know keeping because like when you were talking about like Churchill's monument being destroyed and all that sort of stuff well you could say that about they just destroyed everything it was regardless everything. of it was regardless of monuments everything. I just think it was just anything that's in the way I mean they went into like in America now I'm talking about this is they went into yeah. a Mercedes dealership and just set all these you know, millions and millions of dollars worth of cars to some for yeah. just because they could. So, like when you say the monument, I yeah, did. Who was that rapper? Who was a rapper on the beat on the Brit show who demolished the Lamborghini? Do you remember that? When some bird sat on top of the glass cage singing and he were rapping on the Brits and he took a Lamborghini. I don't remember that one now. And he smashed it to pieces with an hammer. A coloured guy and he smashed. And the song was shit. It was one of the. Oh, it was a video, was it? It was a video. It was a video. No, no, he did it live at the Brits, and he oh, took fuck. a sledgehammer. And he demolished a Lamborghini, a brand new Lamborghini. And some bird sat on top wailing. Hey, how's it doing? He's doing the rap. Like, oh, I don't know. Oh, I, didn't, oh, I, didn't oh, I didn't see that one. I didn't see that. It in the British world. But it sounds yeah. terrible. It's destroying well, you know, the lovely Lamborghini. It's the violence, though. I mean, this, this young lad who got stabbed up in Ireland. How's he doing? Uh, as far as I know, it's not life threatening, but the videoed, the vi- that was videoed. I mean, that was, I mean, that's, it's, it's shocking. It's shocking. shocking. I mean, somebody did it. Yeah. He's only a young guy. I mean, and, you know, he's, you know, I mean, yeah. I mean, people. If that, you've got a grievance, if you've got a grievance, take it out with the authorities, take it up with government and take it up with the actual police. Don't involve smashing up your livelihood, my livelihood. Uh, hitting ladies in the uh, well, that's what protests you know, supposed lit. to be about and all that sort of stuff. But like you see, you yeah. see, it, you see what's that, what's happening now is because uh, because I think Trump badly handled it. If he'd have got those four cops and arrested them and just say we're well, arresting these guys, it probably wouldn't have escalated so badly because something was no. done about it. So and it's th- a knock-on effect because Boris has done the same. He's not handled it. It's hit. So now in Britain they're, they're just yeah, coming so out and coming out and getting worse and worse. Yeah, you've got in Sweden. You've got in Sweden. They were kicking police cars yesterday, kicking police but cars, that's... and there was a young black lad. I'll send you the link. A young black lad uh, from Ghana, yeah, via England. who was a personal trainer in Gothenburg. Casual as you like. There's like these guys going up and they're trying to put chairs through uh, windows of a Gucci or something shop. And as cool as anything, he stood himself in between and he talked him down. And he was on that television was today. That was good. Yeah, it was brilliant, right? And he and he was on TV today. He's become a celebrity because he's extremely humble. And he's like, well, no, you know, I just don't like seeing people Violence. doing this. Yeah. And he said that behind the masks, it were like 13 and 14-year-old kids that were doing it. Yeah, well, of course, like, you're going to get loads of kids who stay under the disgust they can because there's no cops around. They're going to do yeah. that. Yeah, this is going to damage anything yeah. that they can. But like it did in the streets, um, like people are just doing, it's kind of copycat kind of stuff now. And it's just every right. sort of, like, I bet you if you questioned half them like they do sometimes, if you went out with a microphone and asked, why, why are you doing this? They wouldn't be able to answer you probably because they don't actually know. Well, they won't, they won't even know what the name is. No, they, no, they won't even know why, why, yeah, why, why it's being done. It's, so, uh, I, I just think it's a start, sad state of affairs. I mean, I'm, I'm planning now for 2021 New Zealand. And funnily enough, some of my friends in New Zealand, when, uh, what's her name, Asinda, when she closed New Zealand down, they all got the arse on. They're like, oh, God, I can't go to the pub and what's going to happen and et cetera, et cetera. And I left on the day of the 19th of March at 9 o'clock in the evening. And at 12, 12th of, uh, 19th of March at midnight, they put New Zealand into lockdown. New Zealand had 21 deaths and they've been free of COVID-19 for 17 days. And New Zealand is going home after going to quarantine for 14 days, as from tomorrow. And foreigners have to wait. And they went into lockdown. Yeah. They sorted it all extremely quick. Everybody working like myself, self-employed, got a check for $7,000 within the first week. So they were saying, look, you don't have to pay your mortgage. You don't have to pay rent. You don't have to pay utility bills. And to keep you going, here's seven grand. Well. And guess what? No hassle, no aggro. And, not, well, what is it, nine and a half weeks later, ten weeks later, the COVID-19 free. Tomorrow, everything opens back to normal. There's not a new normal in New Zealand. It's back to normal. Yeah. Pubs open, no social distancing, no masks. Whereas in Spain, in Spain, I can't go home, as you know, where that's where I live normally. They're, they're lifting 
the sixth sixth extension to their uh, lockdown, but they're keeping all the rules. And all that's going to happen is now all the companies have to leave the state of emergency and start yeah. paying people without any tourists or without any money. And they've gone about it totally wrong. Two meters distance, face masks, social de blah de blah de blah de blah de blah, and they've still got a lot of deaths. But Britain, Britain has more deaths That's right. daily now than the whole of Europe. And where's Boris Johnson? Hiding. It's infuriating uh, because yeah, Brit, my Brit life, my life can't go forward. I'm, I'm in some okay. Sweden's a great place, but I'm in some sort of limbo. Luckily, we've got a home here, and I'm painting my bloody house because I've got nothing else to do. But like early, early, earlier on, like I know you're saying, like uh, all the people were out um, uh, running right and all that sort of stuff, and you think probably COVID, COVID nineteen is probably a con. But there they all are dying in the thousands in the UK. So how come it's like they're dying like in such massive amounts there? And no. Yeah, but how, how, how are they dying of COVID nineteen? Well, I, I, unless you know, it's done my head in this whole COVID. <laughs> that's locked, what I'm saying. It, it's it's locked, that's what I'm saying. Earnings. It's upside down at the lack moment. So there it is over in the UK, killing thousands and thousands, and like it's uh, 40, the, over forty thousand. Yeah. Sweden, they've been going to lockdown and they've passed five thousand five hundred deaths, but the numbers are going down. They have thirty five deaths today, which is pretty good. Yeah. Not great for the 35 who died or the families around them, but we never went down into lockdown. But it still it still changed the industry. Yeah, the I mean, today I actually sang today this afternoon. I was singing, and I went I went from New Zealand with a thousand, two thousand people every show, and today I was singing at a hairdresser's grocery, a warehouse <laughs> where hairdressers come to buy the product. And look at the state of my bloody hair. They didn't even do your, they didn't even do your hair for you. Yeah. No, but I mean that's this is what's happening. It's decimated our trade. You know, it's, well, uh, it's the decimated. Good, on, the, on the plus side, yeah. have you been recording? Have you been recording while in this time when you've not been able to? No, I've been. I, 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 you know what? You wouldn't believe the amount of time it take to 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 line up some of the stuff I have on the show. And um, oh, I would, I would. Does I've lo- done radio, so yeah, yeah. There's loads of stuff. There's loads of time involved in getting each day ready. And then uh, I, yeah. have, I have a guy called Steve Car- Stevie Carroll, who's who's walking in the background and he's uh, walking on say some of the guests alongside myself. And he walks in the background, oh, and he's bringing it. It's making making my life a little bit easier, you know, because we're doing it as a collaboration. Yeah. He wanted to get on board and get involved, and he's doing this an outstanding job, you know. So this takes a lot of my time, and uh, now I do be thinking about it as well. Like you know, what I mean, although um, we started out to entertain everybody and uh, to help everyone, and then to kind of bring up subjects on the show, you kind of yeah. have to say to yourself, you know. You know, like uh, after this lockdown is finished, you know, can we sustain it? Can we keep it? Yeah. Can, can we keep this show on the go with people? Is this the sort of show well, that they want to see? Because it's it's, a, it's the most entertaining show that I watch. Right. When you have some really diverse guests, I mean, the kickboxer you had on the the Mai Tai guy, you were amazing. That was a great story. I uh, love. Oh, yeah, yeah, the Aaron, yeah. Aaron. Yeah, and yeah. the boxer guy today. Yeah, uh, it's only say with Rex to Riches. I mean, interesting. I never knew this guy. I, w- I remember watching the fight. I remember watching him fight calm. Yeah. I thought there's something wrong with him. And then all these years later, you find out it's because he broke his leg. <laughs> and I, d- I didn't know it, you know? Yeah. I'm watching him thinking, well, I've seen this guy fight before, and he's a pretty canny fighter. He's a right. He's a battler. You but know, he's I remember seeing to, he's, that. Yeah, he's trying to get back up with a broken leg. Yeah. <laughs> I can't get up. I can't get up with so good legs. <laughs> no. But like, yeah. So like, I mean, yeah. So I, I'm trying to think. You know, how can I make the the show uh, versatile enough for people to watch? Because like people, uh, but you know, you're up against so many other people streaming. Then you're up against so many people and um, like television as well. So like, I'm trying to make the show as versatile as I can and bring on interesting subjects, interesting people. I mean, he, well, we all know you, you're politically driven. Uh, you're that that's oh, yeah, extremely. Yeah. uh, yeah, extremely. I, yeah, I, that, want to, that, that, I want to be the president. I want to be the president, now. yeah. No, I, no. I, I, I did say to you, like, you, you, you know, you should, uh, a uh, for political banter, you should set up a show, but um, uh, in, in yeah, the politics, the is that somebody uh, I won't last very long because I'm, I'm not politically correct. I mean, the thing we all show is you, you are very diverse, and it's very, and you've got your, you've got such a good way. We're talking. You, you make people comfortable. You make me comfortable, for example. You don't, yeah. you don't feel like you're in a. You're not, you're not with Pierce Morgan. You're with somebody who's chatting, you know, friendly. Yeah, yeah. And I, I watch. I watch your show pretty much most nights because I actually think it's better than the shit. Not saying yours is not shit. 
the shit on TV is chronic. Yeah, our, t- it's, it's just our TV, awful. our TV at the moment. BBC, the Swedish TV, they don't ever ask any challenging questions. Yeah. They're afraid to, to push the, the envelope. They just get on with whatever they're told to do. And I think people are tired of that as well. So I'm hoping that you continue with your show because it's, it's yeah. very entertaining. It's very entertaining. Yeah, well, I'll... it's uh, off the cuff. Yeah, and well, when it's off the cuff, it works. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I mean, some of the some of the stuff that we were trying to bring up is we're trying to bring up a bit of absolutely everything for everybody. You know, what I mean, so regardless if it, if it's if it's if it's politics, if it's sport, uh, the the channel was basically pushed up against uh, really entertainment driven. Uh, that's what it really. Yeah. That's where they started out. But other subjects have to come into play where people want to talk yeah, about stuff. And then we, we brought... want to talk about the Premier. Who wants to talk about the Premier League? I don't, you know, I've followed West Ham all my life and I don't even care. I don't care that the football's off. I actually don't miss it. You don't miss it anymore? uh, No, I mean, I used to go uh, religiously, you know, up to part with my church. And I used to fly from Sweden or from Spain for big games and Upton Park. And and then I just went to the London Stadium once and I thought, this is just, this is awful. And, you know, it's just... You're looking at these guys who don't have any soul. I remember meeting Pablo de Canio, and we got we had a drink together. You know, it were great. It were down to earth. I mean, he's a multimillionaire, and he's like, "Wow, you got a West Ham shirt on," and blah blah blah. I'm in New Zealand, and Winston Reid, who played at West Ham for many years, yeah, uh, it was he was watching one of my shows, and we sat with him and his uncle and his auntie afterwards, and he were telling me about his Maori roots and etc. And it, all the time of the day for everybody, and yet today when you see them, they ain't got time of day for anybody. You know, and they're on two hundred and big deal. They took a twenty percent pay cut. Wow! Thank you for yeah, your two hundred forty thousand pound a week. Yeah, you see, they're, they're, like get out, get out of yourself. They're, they're all on the contract, so they're they're going to get paid. The footballers are going to get paid, right? Because they have a contract. You're not getting paid, are you? You're not getting paid. No. I'm not being getting paid. No. Well, I, I, I have to find yeah, do you know what we? You know, we have the COVID payment here. Uh, that's that's all I'm surviving on at the moment. I I um. We have to we get we get three hundred and fifty euro. That's what everyone that's entitled to, is is entitled to get. But I'm thinking to myself, you know, I mean, even with this specific show, like you know, I mean, you know, you have to try and think at the end game, like, are we going to yeah. be able? Are we going to be able to turn it into, you know, money? You know, like into commercial, commercial, yeah, yeah. You know, it's going to be. Is it going to be commercial enough to that, make money? When you turn it, when you go in commercial and you try to make money, they'll be banning me, mate. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, 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 it depends how deep you. Sometimes you can get, sometimes you can get into things pretty deep, you know. But there's other things that you can talk about as well, Rod. I mean, you're real interested. I mean, oh, loads of stuff. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you, you're so interested when it comes to. I mean, you know, loads of people in the music game, and it's always a good thing to talk about. Uh, there's so many other things that don't. They don't. They don't have to be. Always political. I know you're ha- heavily dri- da- driven that way, but no. But say, right, for example, today, right, the, the show I did today. It's a friend of mine. Yeah, he, he sells hair- hairdressing products to the whole of Sweden. He's a very good friend of mine. He said, "I've got an open day. Do you want to come and sing?" So I did. I set up underneath a staircase and yeah. I sang. Yeah, about ten songs. People coming in and out, and you know, I was just like, "Wow, it's great to get my vocal cords working again." Yeah, the yeah. first two or three songs are sounded like Joe Cocker. Because you know yourself, if you don't use your voice regularly, yeah. it, cra- it, it goes. It oh, you goes. have to, you have to, you have to well, sing. I really enjoyed it. And I was thinking, when I was singing there, I'm thinking to myself, is this my new normal? Are we ever going to get back to standing in front yeah. of thousands of people singing? It's, it's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's a horror. It's, a, it's petrifying. It's, it's horrifying, the thought that people like us, who are used to going out and spreading joy and sharing wonderful music with people, that that might have been stolen away from us. Yeah, and that, that's a, that's my biggest fear at the moment because I hate painting this house, and my wife said he should be a painter. I and know. Like, yeah, the the list oh. does come out, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, around, around here, around uh, just around, just driving around today, we we decided well we're going to sell our garden furniture, and the wife wanted a new set, so you have to go and look for the new set, right? But on your way around, you oh. can just see skips everywhere. And the amount of yeah. decorating that's going on, people must be they must be professional decorators now at this stage. All they must have nice bank managers. They yeah. must have nice nice bank managers. Yeah, I mean, I mean how my, can... bank in, my bank in Spain is sending me reminders. Bank, yeah. you've got that mortgage well. I wonder if I could get to my house. I'm not even in my bloody house. I can't get there. Yeah, yeah. A residency. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's like, but you're lucky. You're, is... you're lucky. You know, your wife is originally from uh, Sweden, so you have a home yeah, there right. as well. Yeah, you well, we're very lucky because uh, otherwise. I honestly don't know what we'd do because uh, I, w- I would be homeless. 
basically, because my home, my home the, is they, they, There is the thing right there, you know what I mean? Because they got, you imagine the amount of people who have to try pay the landlord. And the landlord doesn't give a shit what's going on. And no, then no, the, he wants his money. He wants his money. So that's a problem. That's a big problem. And then same with people that own stores. The, the, like, yeah. So while all this, th- these stores are closed and these guys try to return to the, the, the small little hairdressers or the little shop that they've had going for years and then the, the landlord turns around and says, well, you know, you never paid your rent for the three months. Uh, the locks are, you know, it's closed. That's well, right. Y- you've got to pay three months rent, you know, before we open up the door. It's not going to happen. People won't be able to do that. And well, I said from day one, it's not the COVID-19, which is a problem, it's what comes afterwards. Oh, That's yeah, the recession. The there's there's going to be a bit oh, massive it's recession. Gonna be, it's going to be it's gonna be horrendous. So, I mean, again, what's one of the first thing that goes in a recession? It's people going out and listening to entertainment. That's right. Hospitality branch That's goes right. again. So, I mean, we're, we're not realistic. We're looking at getting back to... Anywhere near. No, so, that, so that's why. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I mean, years. that's why I've been realistically uh, thinking about what what it is that I really want to do. Now I enjoy, I love doing the shows. I absolutely love doing the shows. Mm. But at the same time, I have to be realistic. How can like if, how do I make how do I make a living out of having the show? How do I make a living? You know, like uh, like yeah. what do I have to do? Because I put a lot of time into getting this ready, and I love getting it ready, and I love doing the shows, and I love having the guests on. And uh, but I do have to think at the same time, what is the next route? You know what I mean? That I have to go down or that I want to go down because like there's so many things that I can do. You know, you know I don't look at but like I'm actually I'm pretty handy with woodwork and all that sort of stuff. But I don't want to be fitting kitchens. Come out to my house. Come out to my house. I'm 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 handy when I want to be, but I'm not. I'm a lazy handy man. I don't really want. That's not really what I want to do. I don't want to. I don't want to be building furniture. I don't want to be building all that sort of stuff. Uh, I can yeah, I mean, like I, I can hang doors, afters. I can hang doors. I do all that sort of stuff. But I'm saying to myself, what is it I want to do? You know what I mean? Because like you have to be realistic. Because um, I think looking at it now after being in this predicament after 30 years of me doing entertainment, and then you you've been in the game longer than than I have, and you say to yourself, you have to have an actual other business. You know, and yeah, you do. and if you look at most of the business that you can do, this. Um, most business now that's flourishing is online business. No matter, that's right. that's no matter what you want, no matter what you want, or they're looking at the same trade. It's on here, so uh, yeah. people are communicating on here. People are selling on here. Um, there's so many things. People are saying, uh, "Get Guinness to sponsor your show." I would love to if they want to sponsor my show. Do. They well, Jameson, did you did you do you really put Jameson in your milk as a baby? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, I'm not messing. No, I'm not. No, that, that's that, that's an old Irish thing. What they used to do when the baby was teething, they'd put their the finger on the end of the bottle and rub the Jameson on the baby's gums. Oh, that'll do. That'll do the trick. That's you that's, know, divers, so that's that's probably how that's, that's probably how I'm a half alcoholic. <laughs> uh, but that diversifying. Uh, your, your last guest on me when I'm about doing a book. I've actually done two. You've I've done... been writing. I've been I've been writing one book for four years. About really? my, uh, show you come up. About my, can you see my tattoo? Uh, yeah, I could see, see it. What exactly? I had, done in, I, had, I had this done in New Zealand by the Rock's cousin. Right. A, a girl called Moana Grant. Uh, okay. She did it all freehand. And it's great. It's written in Maori, Go go With God, it was my dog that passed away. All right, so it was his cousin. It was cousin. Yeah, the Rock is killed. Yeah, I like it. Well, she was. Yeah, she's his cousin because Polynesian. They're from. They're all from Hawaii originally. And they came down. Yeah, yeah, I like him. Yeah. You know, Steve Redgrave, eat your heart out sort yeah, of thing. Yeah. They went 6,000 miles. Well, I started writing a book when she passed away to ease the pain. And it, it took so long. And then I started telling me one of my daughters, the bedtime story were about Luna. So I actually wrote a book and it's called Princess Luna. Wag the tail, which right. is a pretty cool name, and it's about pit bulls because I, I like pit bulls and all my dogs are pits, so pit bull yeah, breeds. Yeah. They, they come down from the planet called Wag to children who yeah. are in danger and they save their lives. But the thing is, the dogs can talk, but only the kid can hear them. And I've just finished it this last two months. I've had, actually had time, I've been writing it for four years, and the last two months I've actually finished it. So that's that's going off to a publishing house. Uh, to what they call oh, ghost reading, oh, no, whatever they do when they well, that could turn they, into they, a, they that, a, yeah, that could turn into a cartoon. Yeah. It really is it's excellent. But then I did another book which I actually just finished two days ago, and that's called Sorry Love, I'm Not Rod Stewart, and it's right. uh, about all the people I've met 
uh, and uh, the exploits of my life. So I think I'm going to get sued quite a lot for that book. All oh, right, so that, 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 that's, more of a, so, uh, that's more of an autobiography, is it? Yeah, tongue-in-cheek and it's naughty. But, because, uh, ah. I mean, you've seen a lot of things. I mean, for example, when Britney Spears, just a little excerpt, when Britney Spears, remember when she got uh, tomato when she came out, when she played at uh, Wembley? Yeah. And people said she reminded me. Well, it wasn't her. It was a friend of mine who does Britney Spears. So I won't say her name now. But she was actually in the auditorium watching the show. It's when Britney lost her mind and she offered a trolley backstage and someone spotted this girl, pulled her there and said, can you do it? She went, yeah, but I don't want to mind because, I, you know, I'll do this five, six days a week. This is what I do for her. She's a dead ringer for Britney. Sounds, well, anybody can sound like Britney, to be honest, because Britney doesn't have a great voice, but she's a dead ringer for it. And so when Britney Spears was passed out backstage, this girl I know who does Britney went on stage and she was forced to mime because the whole show is playback. And people noticed that she was miming. So when Britney Spears came out of the front door, which wasn't Britney, it was my friend, she actually got tomato and apples and oranges thrown at her. I don't even remember that. And that's when Britney had passed out. So stuff like that's in the book. Right. The publishers have asked me to get a verification for it. So I called to my friend and she sent me a letter of verification saying this is all true and et cetera. And she got £50,000 for that. Wow. Not bad for a nice work. 50000 so, uh, And when Sean Connery uh, told me to F off, because he said, uh, yeah, people like you are cockroaches on the bottom of my shoe. And he told me to F off and I said, smile. And the Danish newspaper were taking a photograph. So it's a lot of that sort of stuff in it. So it's a funny right, insight. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. the books that I like to read, the autobiographies and fun, or I like to read kids' books for my children. Of course, so, yeah, because uh, you've yeah, yeah, you've, you've you've daughter, yeah, 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 yeah. So I've done one in my name and one in an alias name because I don't want people to know that it's the same, the same writer. Because they'll say, "Well, God, hold on a minute, that guy's a nutter. This is a great book. <laughs> this guy's crazy." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, so uh, that's that's been a, a bonus. It's been a plus side of. Uh, I mean, as I said, we're not in lockdown here like you've been in lockdown. But there's nowhere to go anyway because the Swedish people are very responsible and they've stayed indoors and all the music stopped and mass gatherings have stopped, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I've had plenty of time to, to finish it. And finally, my wife's like, wow, you finally finished it. And I'm saying, Princess Luna wagged the tail. So when that comes out, I'll send you a signed copy, mate. That's all right. You're the first to get it. I'll be looking for it. And what you should do is you should get another mate of mine on your show, Kimberly Chambers. Yeah. She's a number one uh, Sunday Times seller. She's our 12 number one bestsellers. And uh, she's a Cockney girl. Yeah, well, I'll, that... I'll tell her to send you a friend's request because she is funny. Let... But she what... swears every third word. Yeah, well, look. But, I mean, Let... a lot of people read her books. I'd like to, I'd like to get I'd like to get her on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd like to, uh, she's a character, Kimberly. She's great. She's absolutely... She's d- done a book called Queenie, and she went away from her normal genre. And it's all uh, just after the war. It's all set just after World War Two. Right. And so she had to go back and do all the research to all the old timers. And the book's just absolutely mind blowing because the amount of information actually in the book, for me, the content is actually better than the story. And the story is like geezers, gangsters, breaking legs, shooting people. But the actual <laughs> content in the book is phenomenal. And yeah. it's stuff that, as an Englishman, I thought I should know. Right, right. But I didn't. And, you know, so there's, you know, there's bonuses and pluses and ne- negatives to everything. And I just can't wait for some sort of normality to return into our lives. Well, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it myself. But, Rudders, will you join us again next Monday? And how um, with pleasure, now, mate. Now that we have uh, we have a direct connection, uh, we can call up. <laughs> and we, we, we'll try and come up with uh, the exact, uh, whatever. What, maybe we can come up with the rant that you're going to come out with, or maybe we, 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 we'll set a subject for you or something like that. And we, we, we'll get... We've got seven days until next Monday, mate. We, we, might, know, we'll do, we might ask a few people, what do you want Rod to rant about next week? Yeah, you know do, that, I mean? do that. Do that. What, what would you like Rod to, to rant about? You know what I mean? That's what we'll do. <laughs> And you, you can come out with the rant and we'll let, hear him go off on a crazy one, like about whatever, Happy days. whatever rant. We'll pick it out. We'll pick it out. Could well, be we a... got there in the end, mate. Thanks yeah. for getting me on. No, I'm absolutely delighted yeah. to have you on. We went on a little bit later than normal, only because we had a few technicals, but we're all yeah, back up and running. Right. But it's 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 been... Well, fun. Make sure get, get some sponsors in and keep your show going because it's awesome. No, we will. <laughs> we'll do our best. We'll do our best. But Rudd... Happy th- days, mate. Thanks very much Take for coming care, on. Thank you. And next time, I want, next time I want you to do... I want you to be Michael Jackson so you can do your part for harmony of our races, mate. 
Yeah, okay. Can't you, can't you come on as Michael Jackson? <laughs> can't you come on all done up? Yeah, you know the voice. Why are you I, talking? I probably could. I, I could sing this Hi, stuff. Hello. Hi, Red. How are you doing, Red? My, <laughs> my name is Michael right. Jackson. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah. take care, buddy. Okay, well, I'll talk yeah, to you soon. Keep it up. Talk we, to you soon, mate. And I, I'll, I'll talk to you oh. next Monday. All right, All right buddy. See you then. Bye-bye. 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 Hey, Sam, I've got to love you and leave you. Thanks very much for joining the show tonight. We'll see you all tomorrow at 8.